Chapter 401, Number 107. Where is Number 107? Hansen spitted out some blood in his mouth and asked quietly. You will know when we get there. Mingyu did not talk to Hansen again and hit the road. Mingyu never expected to get much from Hansen's mouth. And there was no way he would let Hansen off the hook at this point. Hansen was curious about the number 107 Ning you mentioned. However, the group of people did not speak about it at all. All they did was traveling. It seemed that they were in a hurry. Hansen understood the reason. All of them had evolved and could not stay too long in First God's Sanctuary, otherwise their bodies would not be able to take it. Under this circumstance, Ningyu still insisted to take him to number 107, which made Hansen even more curious about it. Very soon, Hansen's question was answered. The group of people traveled across Devil Desert on sacred blood mounts and entered an arid mountain. There was only a very narrow path to enter the valley. Only one man could pass at a time. A couple of men took Hansen to enter the valley. When they approached the valley, Hansen saw everything. He could barely see any other creature. White rocks and sand were everywhere. In the middle of the valley, there was a giant blooming red flower that looked like a rose facing upward. Around the flower, there were many vines and leaves covered with thorns. The vines almost covered the entire valley, making it look like a greenhouse for the flower. Hansen looked around. In addition to the red flower and the vines, he did not see anything else, let alone any creatures. Is this number 107? Hansen asked, surprised. That's right. This is number 107, Ningyu answered him, to Hansen's surprise. Ningyu then continued, Every time Starry Group finds a creature that is suspected to be something beyond sacred blood creatures, we would give it a number and record it. This is number 107. You mean this giant flower? Hansen checked out the red flower, which looked like a plant in every way. Although it was huge in size, there was no way it could be a creature. You will know that very soon. Enter the valley. Ningyu asked his men to aim their arrows and weapons at Han Sound, forcing Han Sen to go inside. Go inside. After Lu Lin unchained Han Sen's legs, he pushed Han Sen hard. What is in there? Han Sen almost lost his balance, but he did not pay Lu Lin any mind. Ningyu did not ask for his beast souls. Although there were a lot of vines growing in the valley, as long as he had sacred blood wings, it would be easy for him to fly away. He could not see how the valley could trap him. Give me the dagger now and you don't need to go inside," Ningyu said calmly. I do not want to give you my dagger, and I don't want to go inside either," Hansen replied. You can try to kill us all and run away," Ningyu said with a smile. Ningyu's words made the Evolvers laugh. They all pointed their weapons at Hansen, indicating that they were could take Hansen's life anytime. No one believed that Hansen could run away under the siege of 14 Evolvers. In addition, Hansen's upper body was chained with the special Z-Steel locks on his joints. Even an Evolver could not get rid of this kind of locks. Only those strong Evolvers with their fitness level around 80 could break free from the locks with their own strength. Young Master, why do you have to kill me? If you resent me for killing your doppelganger, I could pay you. Hansen stared at Ningyu. If you have just crossed me, I will never try to kill you. Unfortunately, you gained something you shouldn't have. Give me the dagger or go in the valley. Your pick, Ningyu said quietly. I choose to kill. Hansen shook his body and twisted in the weirdest angle. All the locks that were on his joints fell from his body. Hansen had been practicing jade skin for a long time and was better and better controlling his own body. Moving his bones and muscles, he felt the locks were completely useless on him. After removing the locks, Hansen quickly summoned the cursed wolf dagger and stabbed it at Ningyu. Ningyu did not look surprised. He summoned a slim sword and wielded it at Han Senator. The 13 Evolvers also summoned their own weapons and started to attack Han Senior. If Hansen insisted to kill Ningyu with his dagger, he would be facing 13 weapons himself. Therefore, he had to go backward and wave his weapon at other people. The fitness level of Hansen was slightly weaker than the Sacred Blood Evolvers. Although he could increase his strength and speed using Heresy Mantra and Overload, his original fitness was not improved. When cutting by the Evolvers, he would still get hurt, which was why Hansen was still trying to dodge their attacks. This way, however, Hansen felt himself trapped. Even with Heresy Mantra and Overload and the Cursed Wolf Dagger, he still found it difficult to get rid of the Evolvers. Hansen could not even hurt an individual or damage a single weapon. Thirteen different weapons came at Hansen continuously, leaving him at an absolute disadvantage. 
Hansen had to retreat into the valley. It was not because the 13 evolvers were strong, but because of Ningyu. The sword skills of Ningyu did not seem very impressive. Instead, it was somewhat irrational. Sometimes, the sword did not even come at Hansen, but toward empty space. However, it was exactly the sword skills that connected the attacks from the 13 people together, making it into a trap which Hansun could not run away from. Hansun did not even have an opportunity to fight back. Although he had a sharp weapon, he had to retreat again and again. Chapter 402 I Choose to Kill The sword skills called K.E. focused on sacrificing oneself to complete other people's attack. The 13 Evolvers were from different shelters and did not have much time to practice their collaboration. However, with Ningyu present, they were connected into one killing machine. Even Hansen could not find any cracks. Ningyu looked extremely calm. All his moves looked effortless but followed some incredible rules. Although his attacks were not aggressive, he managed to turn the moves of the other 13 Evolvers into a part of himself, forcing Hansen into the vines. Ningyu did not want to kill Han Sen in the first place. He only wanted to see for himself the fights between Han Sen and those incredibly strong creatures. Either Han Sen killed the creature or got killed, his doubts would be answered. Young master, do we really need to fight this out? Han Sen asked while retreating, as he understood Ningyu's intentions. If I am alone, I would be glad to be your friend and never hurt you. However, Ningyu said and never stopped his sword forcing Hansen to touch the vines. What a shame. I did not want to kill, but... Hansen sighed and said. He was speaking his mind. Before figuring out the relationship between the Nings and the Hans, Hansen did not want to kill. However, he was left with no choice. Same as Ningyu, Hansen was the kind of person that would leave no mercy when he decided to kill. Kill? You? You think you are good with that sharp dagger? That doesn't do anything. You are merely a beast trapped in a cage. Your life and death depends on our wish, exclaimed Lu Lin fiercely. Is that right? Hansen curled his lips. Watching the weapons coming at himself, he did not go further back, but pointed at Lu Lin. Retreat. Ningyu suddenly had a bad feeling. Although there was no way that Hansen could block so many weapons, for some reason, Ningyu felt danger. As the weapons were about to reach Hansen's body, it was too late for Hansen to run away and for the Evolvers to take back their weapons. Despite Ningyu's command, his men could no longer stop themselves. Boom! A giant monster in jade armor that looked like the cross between a scorpion and a bee suddenly appeared next to Hansen, knocking away all the weapons about to hit Han Sr. The weapons used by the Sacred Blood Evolvers were top-notch in First God Sanctuary, but none of them could hurt that monster. Instead, the Evolvers were knocked back. Crack! A pair of claws that looked like the sickles of the death crossed above Lu Lin's shoulders, sending his head into the air. Lu Lin's eyes were stared wide even after death, filled with terror. The fierce Super Golden Rock Worm King killed his way into the group. Its four wings buzzing, the Worm King danced with its eight claws moving up and empty down. It was a true slaughter. Wearing Super Pet Armor, the Super Golden Rock Worm King did not even look like something that belonged to First God Sanctuary. Even the Sacred Blood Evolvers could not hurt it. Instead, anywhere the Worm King went, limbs would fall and blood would jet out. In front of absolute strength, even the KE Sword skills were completely useless. At this point, the Super Golden Rock Worm King was even stronger than the Turtle. After all, its speed and strength were the same as the Turtle. And what the Turtle was best at defense was not as strong as the pet armor. Paired with its flying ability and sharp claws, it was as easy as slaughtering a dog for the Golden Rock Worm King to kill the Sacred Blood Evolvers. There was no chance for the Evolvers to retreat as well. The path connecting the valley and outside was so narrow that only one man could pass at a time. In addition, their speed was far worse than the Golden Rock Worm King. As the group of people reached the path, a better half of them had already been killed by the Super Golden Rock Worm King. Only three men made it to the past. As tough as Ningyu, he felt shocked when seeing the Sacred Blood Evolvers that Starry Group took a lot of time and effort to cultivate slaughter like this. What shook him even more was the existence of the Super Golden Rock Worm King. Could it be something beyond a Sacred Blood pet? Ningyu regarded the Worm King which was too huge to enter the narrow path with complex emotions as he walked out of the path. Hansen quickly took the pet back and entered the path himself with the Cursed Wolf Dagger. 
There was no way he could let Ning Yu run away like this. Using Heresy Mantra and Overload, Han Sen's speed was much better than the three survivors. It only took him a moment to catch up with them. The two Sacred Blood Evolvers falling behind Ning Yu tried to defend themselves, but there was no space for them to dodge in the narrow path. In addition, their weapons were slashed in half by the cursed wolf dagger. Hearing two screams and seeing the blood, Ning Yu knew that he was all alone, and Han Sen was in his face immediately. Ning Yu knew there was no way he could get out of here alive. After all his calculation, he did not expect Han Soon to have such a frightening pet. Ning Yu sighed and gave up, standing still and waiting for death to come. Ning Yu, what's so special in this valley? Han Sen asked, with his dagger on Ning Yu's neck. Just kill me. Don't ask. Ning Yu did not move a muscle, not even opening his eyes. It is not that easy to die either, Han Sen said calmly. Suddenly, a beast soul was summoned and rushed to Ning Yu. Ning Yu's expression suddenly changed after he heard what Hansen said. He quickly opened his eyes and saw an ugly dark purple beast soul that looked like an alligator in his face. Boom! The beast soul did not pause and entered Ning Yu's body. The giant creature sent itself into Hansen's chest with ease. Ning Yu felt his whole body was stabbed and impaled, like someone was slicing his muscle. However, that feeling only lasted for a second. Shortly, the ugly beast soul came out of Ning Yu's body and curled up next to Han Sen, its spooky eyes fixed on Ning Yu. Chapter 403 Nine Life Cat For some reason, Ning Yu started to shiver when watched by the ugly beast soul. It felt like his soul was shaking. Without hesitation, Ning Yu turned his sword around and stabbed it at his own chest, trying to kill himself. Roar! The ugly beast soul opened its mouth. Suddenly, Ning Yu lost the control of his body. He spread his hands and dropped the sword on the ground. Watching Ningyu who was pale as a sheet of paper, Hansen said quietly, I told you that it is not that easy to die. Answer a few questions, then maybe I will let you die. What beast soul is that? Ningyu coughed but did not answer Hansen's question. Aqua Reaper, a parasite beast soul, Hansen said. Hansen had been looking for the information on beast soul parasites on the Skynet, but he failed to find any. After doing a lot of tests, he finally understood how the beast soul parasite is used. The Aqua Reaper could inhabit on any creature or man and share its or his life. At this point, Ning Yu's life no longer belonged to himself as the Aqua Reaper could also control his body. How much control it had depended on how much strength the beast soul and its host had respectively. There was no doubt that the Aqua Reaper as a super beast soul was much stronger than Ning Yu. Therefore, the Aqua Reaper naturally had the priority to control Ning Yu's body. Ning Yu's moves and even thoughts could be sensed by the Aqua Reaper and sent to Han Senator, therefore. Han Sen could tell partially what Ning Yu was thinking. The Beast Soul Parasite also had its shortcoming. If its strength was weaker than its host, it would be controlled by the host in turn. Of course, if the host was stronger than the parasite, were as strong as the beast soul parasite initially, it would be difficult for the beast soul parasites to inhabit on the host if the host resisted it. Once it settled down, the beast soul parasite would start to absorb the strength of the host's body. The stronger Ning Yu got, the Aqua Reaper would also grow with him. It would be difficult for Ning Yu to ever get rid of the Aqua Reaper. In First God's Sanctuary, Hansen did not think there was any human who could be stronger than a super beast soul. So inhabitation would almost always be successful, unless the host was a super evolver. So far, in First God's Sanctuary, there was no such person. Hansen had not even maxed out on super geno points himself. Hansen asked a few more questions, but Ningyu answered none. Using the Aqua Reaper, Hansen only got very limited information. Ningyu's will was too strong. What a man! It is so impressive that he had such strong will. Hansen gazed at Ningyu and met his eyes. Kill me. It is impossible that you get anything you want from me. Ningyu said calmly. Ningyu, do you recognize this? Hansen realized that ordinary questions could not shake Ningyu's will. He pondered, took out the red crystal pendant that looked like a cat or fox, and showed it to Ningyu. The moment Ningyu saw the pendant, his expression suddenly changed. From what the Aqua Reaper had read from Ningyu's mind, Hansen heard crazy exclamation, Nine Life Cat. How could it be the Nine Life Cat? It is impossible. I have investigated into your background. There is no way that you are the offspring of Instructor Han. Watching the red pendant in Han Sen's hand, Ningyu spoke. 
Why is it impossible? Seeing that Ning Yu's guard was down, Hansen asked immediately. Ning Yu seemed to be dazed by Hansen's question. A long while later, he suddenly stammered, Yes, you should be his offspring. Yes, you are. Otherwise, how could you be so strong? And how could you? Ning Yu suddenly looked up at Hansen with a complicated look. If you showed me the Nine Life Cat earlier, we would never end up this way. Instructor Han is a benefactor of the Nings. If I knew earlier that you were his descendant, I would never dare to disrespect you. Hansen snorted and said, even if he had saved the Nings, it was a long time ago. If I don't have the strength to defend myself, I don't think you would mind killing me. Ning Yu shook his head and said, We have a family instruction saying that if we meet any descendant of Instructor Han, we have to treat the person as a benefactor. The Nings would never dare to be disrespectful to you. Hansen was very surprised. He could sense what Ning Yu was thinking with the Aqua Reaper. Hansen knew that Ning Yu was telling the truth. However, Hansen could not ask why the Nings would never dare to be disrespectful to the descendant of Instructor Han. If he had asked that, Ning Yu would probably question whether he was really related to Instructor Han. In that case, Hansen would not be able to get more information from him. And Hansen was not so sure that he was actually related to Instructor Han. After all, the whole thing was rather strange. With the Ning's power, there was no way that they never found out the great-grandfather of Han Sen was the same Han Jingji as Instructor Han. Han Sen was wondering himself whether the two were the same person. After all, they did not seem to be of the same age. As Han Sen was wondering what question he should ask, Ning Yu smiled wryly and continued to say, If I knew you were related to Instructor Han, I would never have spent so much effort and lost all the good men the Ning's cultivated. It is just so predictable that someone of the Hans could kill those strong creatures. It seems that you know a lot about what happened in the past, Hansen responded. He wished that Ning Yu could continue to speak. When it came to someone like Ning Yu, if he did not want to tell you something, you would not be able to get half a word even if you killed him. The old people in the family were reluctant to talk about what happened in the past. I don't know a lot, but since Instructor Han was a benefactor to my ancestors, we have a family instruction that was passed down from previous generations to never forget about the favor. That's the only reason that I know about it. Ning Yu sighed and said, I have heard a lot about Instructor Han's deeds since I was a kid. I have always wanted to become someone like him and repay him. I never expected to antagonize his descendant before I thanked the Hans. Oh, tell me about it. What did the Ning say about him? Hansen asked, trying to learn more about the past. Ningyu did not try to hide anything and started to talk. However, the deeds of instructor Han Ningyu mentioned made Hansen feel utterly surprised. He could not believe that he had such a person as great-grandfather. Chapter 404 Early Days The Secret Service were the first men who ever used the teleport technology. The very first who came to God's sanctuary were not Han Jingji and the ancestor of the Nings, but ordinary crew members. After they arrived at God's sanctuary, they found something and had a few accidents. Only two persons made it back to the Alliance. Those two persons reported what they found on the other end, which made everyone overjoyed. Very soon, the second unit was sent through the same way. This time, the personnel dispatched were no longer ordinary crew members, but a unit made up of elite. There were 11 in total, which included the instructor of the Blue Blood Special Force, Instructor Han. That unit was Unit 7. The unit stayed in God's sanctuary for less than seven days. Less than half of them made it to the Alliance, which included Han Jingji and the ancestor of the Nings. After teleporting back, they were investigated respectively. No one knew what was asked and answered. However, since then, the experiments were no longer conducted with human beings. Instead, the teleport device was redesigned. A few years later, the modern teleport device was invented and the news about God's sanctuary was published. The survivors of Unit 7 all died in a weird way shortly after they returned. Before they died, maybe it was for the surveillance on them, they did not say much about what had happened in God's sanctuary. However, they still left some messages. For example, the ancestor of the Ning said to his family that Han Jingji had saved the unit from a monster and described Han Jingji as a true Qigong master. In his words, Han Jingji was a superhero. The Nine Life Cat was Han Jingji's belonging. Han Jingji was always taking it with him, so everyone in Unit 7 knew about the Nine Life Cat. Because he was under the surveillance of the Alliance, 
The ancestor of the Nings did not say much in the first place, unless was passed on to the younger generations. After the ancestor died, the Alliance loosened its control on the Nings. At that time, they found the hidden messages left by the ancestor and learned some things. The Nings did not know much, and Ningyu knew even less. That was basically all he could tell. From the Aqua Reaper, Hansen knew that Ningyu was telling the truth. The Nings were indeed thankful to Hanjingji, and to some extent, they feared him. After all, the ancestor of the Nings described Hanjingji as a very strong Chigo master, which made the Nings terrified of the guy. You have looked into my background, so you should know about the acquisition of my family business by Starry Group. Why have you targeted us? Hansen stared at Ningyu and asked. Hanjingji's deeds were ancient history, but he had to know about his father's death. Ningyu paused and said, You are not saying that my family murdered your father? Whether you believe it or not, I can tell you for sure that there is nothing of the sort. To be blunt, Starry Group had too many means to acquire your family business that did not involve killing. I, in addition, if it was my family that killed your father, my brother would have killed you as soon as he saw you the shelter. No one would let the son of his victim hang around. Hansen frowned slightly. In fact, what Ningyu said was what had always puzzled him. Son of Heaven had looked into his background a long time ago. If Starry Group had murdered his father, there was no way that Son of Heaven would let him live. After all, it was a piece of cake for Son of Heaven to kill him at the time. Why did the Nings acquire my family business? Hansen asked again. I have reviewed the materials carefully. The business decision was made mainly because your factory was producing several types of alloy more efficiently than the Starry Group. All the procedures of the acquisition were in compliance. Although we had some difficulties in the middle, because of your father's accident, everything became smooth. We did not even need to use the agenda that we had prepared. Ningyu continued, however, your father's accident had nothing to do with Starry Group. Even the manager who was in charge of the acquisition felt surprised about your father's accident. However, even without the accident, Starry Group had prepared a lot of financial means to acquire your family business. If Starry Group needed to kill someone for such a small acquisition, then it will have nothing to do all day but murder. Ningyu paused and said, I'm not saying this to beg for my life. It is simply something that we are not responsible for. Hansen frowned at Ningyu for a while, pointed to the vines and flower, and asked, What is that about? The giant flower and its vines are a strong creature. Initially, I wanted to force you fight it. If you managed to kill it, I could take the opportunity and gain its body. However, if you were killed, I would be able to get rid of a huge threat and learn more about the creature, said Ningyu. Hansen looked at the flower and vines again with interest and asked Ningyu with his eyes squinted, Do you want to live? Do you dare to let me live? Asked Ningyu. This is number 107. Your family should know a lot of places like this. Give me the information and I will let you go, Hansen said. Okay. Ningyu did not even ask whether Hansen would let him go after receiving the information before telling Hansen all the locations. This information was what Hansen needed the most. Only when he maxed out on Super Geno points could he evolve. If he were to rely on himself, it depended a lot on luck whether he could find a super creature. With the information accumulated by the Nings for generations, Hansen could easily locate the super creatures. You can go. Hansen commanded the Aqua Reaper to loosen the control on Ningyu. However, the Aqua Reaper was still inhabiting on Ningyu. Unless Ningyu's strength surpassed the Aqua Reaper, Hansen could still order the Aqua Reaper to control Ningyu to commit suicide from a thousand miles away. Ningyu was dazed. He did not expect Hansen to let him go for real. Momentarily, Ningyu knew what Hansen was thinking but did not react. All he said was, the offspring of Instructor Han would only be a friend of the Ning's and never an enemy. Ningyu turned to leave without explanation. Chapter 405 The Power of Angel If Starry Group did not do it, how can I explain my father's accident? Hansen felt puzzled. Although Ningyu must still be hiding something and could not be trusted completely. He could not have lied because of the Aqua Reaper. In addition, before the accident, his father did ask them to find the Nings, which meant the Nings were unlikely to be responsible for the accident. It also seemed that Hansen's father already knew something was going to happen. However, under that kind of circumstances, even if the Nings were not behind the accident, would they help us because of a favor that long ago? Is my father such a gambler? Unless… Coldness flashed in Hansen's eyes. 
Unless the people behind the accident are the enemies of the Nings, and the Nings would antagonize them anyway. Although Hansen had guessed something, it was difficult for him to find out more. The reason he did not kill Ning Yu was that he wished he could use this connection to get more clues. With the Aqua Reaper on Ning Yu's body, Hansen could decide the life and death of Ning Yu. Meanwhile, Hansen could learn a lot of information from him. For Hansen, Ning Yu was more valuable living than dead. Hansen turned his eyes to the giant flower and vines in the valley. He did not mean to take the risks himself. Hansen raised his hand and summoned the Holy Angel. He had always been wondering how strong Holy Angel was, and this was the perfect opportunity. At Hansen's command, the Holy Angel quickly transformed. Her armor, hair, and eyes all turned golden. Flapping her golden wings, she flew toward the giant flower. Her speed was not fast. The moment she reached the vines, all the vines in the valley started to shake. Hundreds of vines as thick as arms swept over at her at an incredible speed. Holy Angel suddenly moved. She flapped her wings hard, and the hundreds of vines suddenly looked slow in comparison as the gorgeous figure flashed across. Boom! As the Holy Angel brushed by the vines, they broke one by one. The giant flower quickly shrank and made spooky noises. The remaining vines started to shake and came at her again like the chains of death. However, that was completely useless. As the Holy Angel flew by, she waved her hand, and the vines were cut off as if they were grass. Instantaneously, the Holy Angel had made her way to the flower with ease. Roar! The flower suddenly turned into the mouth of a beast with fangs bared. It quickly swallowed the Holy Angel that was approaching. Hansen regretted that he did not put the super pet armor on the Holy Angel. After all, this was very likely to be a super creature. If the Holy Angel who had just evolved was swallowed like this, it would be a gigantic loss for Han Sr. In addition to being a super pet, such a pretty humanoid pet was extremely valuable itself. As Hansen was regretting, he suddenly saw the flower split from the middle. The gorgeous figure came out of the flower as regal as a queen. Her body was not even colored by the gushing blood. Super creature purgatory flower killed. No beast soul gained. Life essence available. Surprisingly, the voice sounded in Han Sen's mind, making him feel emotional. Back in the days, he could not even break the eyes of the baby golden growler, while now even his pet could kill a super creature like killing an ant, which made Hansen felt unreal. Amazing. Truly amazing. This girl is even more incredible than the Golden Rock Worm King, which is also a super pet. Hansen did not come back to himself until the Holy Angel returned to him. He hugged her in excitement and was about to kiss her on her cheeks. Hansen did not have any lewd thoughts. It was just an unconscious move. However, although the Holy Angel let Hansen hug her, she raised her hand to Hansen's lips, so Hansen only kissed her cold armor. Hansen was dazed and looked at her gorgeous face, which was completely emotionless. Hansen frowned and took back the Holy Angel. Walking deeper into the valley, Hansen saw a basketball-sized green crystal, which was the life essence of the disappeared purgatory flower. Hansen took the crystal up and started to lick. The cool liquid turned into a coolness and filled Han Sen's body as he drank. Hansen felt like his whole body was cleansed. Life essence of purgatory flower consumed. One super geno point gained. Shortly, Hansen heard the exciting voice, which drove him to lick the life essence harder. After consuming the entire piece of life essence, Hansen had acquired eight more super geno points. At this point, he had 68 super geno points in total. Although Hansen had not been to a test center for a while, he estimated that his fitness index should be approaching 30, which was the same as a sacred blood evolver. Before Hansen even maxed out on the super geno points, he had already come close to this number. Hansen was really looking forward to gaining his super body in the evolution pool. At that point, his body must become incredibly strong. If you come too late, you would not even be a worthy enemy, let alone friend. Hansen suddenly thought of what Son of Heaven said and smiled. Although Son of Heaven evolved earlier, it was not easy for him to get his fitness index over 100. In comparison, according to the speed at which Hansen was improving, when he maxed out on Super Geno points and entered Second God's Sanctuary, all he needed to do was to acquire some random Geno points to be over 100 in fitness index. An evolver with the fitness index over 100 would be considered a top evolver anywhere. And for Hansen, that was already within his reach. Chapter 406 Special Assignment 
Hansen summoned the Golden Growler and had an even better same experience than driving a top sports car. As the mount ran, Hansen felt the objects next to him were going back like a blur. In addition, on the Golden Growler's back, Hansen felt absolutely no bumps. Within less than an hour, Hansen had already returned to Steel Armor Shelter. This trip would have taken him one or two days before, and this was not even the full speed of the Golden Growler. Hansen was overjoyed. With the speed of the Golden Growler and the locations of the super creatures that he learned from Ningyu, he could easily kill a lot of super creatures in a short amount of time, so that he could evolve as fast as possible. Although Hansen wanted to hunt the super creatures on the back of Golden Growler immediately, he held back his urge. Before long, he would have to take a graduation test. There was also a decision to be made on his military rank and position. These all had a tremendous influence on Hansen's future, so Hansen planned to max out on his super geno points during the break before he served in the military and after graduation. After returning to the shelter, Hansen contacted Lin Beifeng as he had promised to sell Lin Beifeng the Phantom and Armor, which he no longer needed. Lin Beifeng was overjoyed getting his hands on the Phantom and Armor. It would still be two to three years before he maxed out on Sacred Blood Geno points, so he could use the armor for a long time. The practical reasons notwithstanding, Lin Beifeng was happy with how it looked anyways. Hansen did not take cash from Lin Beifeng but asked Lin Beifeng to collect some sacred blood meat so that Hansen could fill up his sacred blood geno points which he now had 85. Currently, Hansen had no time to hunt sacred blood creatures given how much he had on his plate. Lin Beifeng could not collect so much sacred blood meat on such short notice. However, Hansen was not in a hurry and asked Lin Beifeng to give him the meat when Lin Beifeng had it. Hansen had to prepare for the graduation test and other procedures, so he would just stay in Steel Armor Shelter for a while. That phoenix-like creature is the closest to Steel Armor Shelter. I will kill it when I have time. If I put the Super Pet Armor on the Holy Angel, she should be able to resist the flames. If I could have a beast soul from that creature, then it will be so good. Hansen thought to himself. When Hansen returned to Blackhawk, his roommates were all in the dormitory. It was rare that none of them was in God's sanctuary, so they went to the cafeteria to hang out. They had agreed beforehand that none of the guys could bring a plus one. Hansen, where do you plan to go after graduation? Shirji Kong asked Hansen with one arm throwing around Hansen's shoulders, tipsy. I will let the AI decide for me, Hansen said helplessly. Although Hansen wanted to serve on the warship where Ji Yin and was even if he had to be just a soldier, he could not even find out which warship Ji Yin and was on. Hansen did not plan to have a career in the military, so it did not matter where he went if he could not see Ji Yin Ran, as long as he was not sent to the front to become cannon fodder. Even if he was sent to the front, he was still an elite who graduated from military school, so he would still be an officer instead of a common soldier. In addition, he was the head of the special squad, which would also be taken into consideration by the AI. Of course, he could use connections to decide on the exact position he served. However, that did not mean much to Han Sen and would take some effort. The roommates were talking and laughing, chatting about their dreams and ambitions. They didn't return to the dormitory until midnight. Han Sen rarely had time to enjoy school life. In these days, he was focused on learning theoretical knowledge as well as the ancient language. To learn the ancient language seemed easy. However, if he were to really understand the meaning of Dong Shan Sutra, it would take him a lot of time and energy. Hansen did not feel like it was a tough mission. He was so curious about Dong Xian Sutra, a martial art that allowed a human being to break the vacuum with his own body and teleport to God's sanctuary sounded like a fairy tale to him. Even in such an era when martial arts had been highly developed, none of the demigods dared to say they could tear apart the vacuum with their own body. If I could practice Dong Xian Sutra, no one in the alliance would be my match. I don't even need to be as good as Dong Xian. If I am half as good as him, I would be invincible in the Alliance still. Even demigods meant nothing to me. Every time Hansen had such thoughts, his blood would start boiling, which motivated him to learn the archaic characters. Fortunately, as the genes of mankind were highly developed these days, everyone had stronger brains than previous generations. Many unevolved persons with their geno points maxed out had strong memory skills, and Hansen was especially outstanding. It did not take him much effort to learn. It took patience to learn the ancient language. 
but once he mastered the language, he could actually read Dongshen Sutra. Hansen enjoyed a few days without hunting and killing. All he did was teleporting to the shelter to enjoy the sacred blood meat Lin Bei Fong sent him and studying at Black Hawk. Soon, it was time for the graduation test. Although Han Sen had controlled his strength very well, he was still the absolute number one in the test and became a major in the military. Each military school only had a few quotas for that kind of honor. However, based on Han Sen's grades and his contribution to the school, his rank was well-deserved. In 48 hours, the AI would make a decision about his assignment. Brother Han, I'm sorry. When it was time for Han Sen to check where he was assigned, Wang Mingming came to him with her head bowed. Hansen felt she did not dare to look at him. Her voice was so low that Hansen could barely tell what she was saying. What's wrong? Hansen smiled and rubbed Wang Mingming's head. Although Wang Mingming was 20 years old, Hansen felt she was still a little girl. Brother Han, I'm sorry. I used my connections to assign you to the Warframe Forest where I'm about to go to without your consent. Brother, I'm so sorry. Wang Mingming was basically whispering. Her face was red and she was avoiding eye contact. That's no big deal. The Warframe Force that you will go to is definitely a good one. I probably should thank you for that, said Hansen, searching for his assignment information. However, the information shown on the display made Hansen pause. Chapter 407 Daphne Sister, is the Warframe Force you're going to join called Daphne? Hansen looked at the information AI displayed incredulously. Daphne? We're supposed to go to the Royal Warframe Force. Wang Mingming looked to the display without doubt and was also shocked by the information. It clearly said that Han Sin was assigned to the cookhouse of worship Daphne. So strange. Did they make a mistake? Wang Mingming became anxious and dialed a number with her comlink. Shortly, Wang Mingming had an odd look on her face. Who did this? Han Sin asked calmly. The information displayed was very weird. It did not tell him about the exact location or even the number of the troops. All he knew was that he was going to serve at the cookhouse of a warship called Daphne. A major who graduated from a military school was assigned to a cookhouse. That was rare but possible. However, it was only possible for the several top warships in the Alliance, which did not include Daphne. Hansen would not believe it if no one had tempered his assignment. I don't know. The connections I used were not able to do anything. Your assignment was decided by the central AI. No one could change it without top authority. Wang Mingming suddenly stared her eyes wide and looked at him. Brother, did you ask anyone to do this? If it were me, I would not have asked you who it was. Hansen pondered and asked, Is it possible for me to find out who did this? Wang Mingming shook her head, looking confused, and said, We do not have enough authority to access that information. However, only a few people would be able to do this. Is it possible that Starry Group was behind it? Hansen asked again. That is unlikely. Although the Nings had some influence in the military, they would not have such high authority. And we would be able to know it if it were them. Wang Miming shook her head and said, Then there is no need to think about it. I'm okay with any post. If someone wanted me to go there, I'll go have a look. Hansen had a relaxed attitude about it, since he would not be able to resist someone who could pull this anyway. In addition, the authorities of the Alliance were always law-abiding. He did not worry that anyone would harm him. Even the cookhouse needs a major. I wonder what kind of place Daphne is. Hansen even felt expectant. He still had three months before registering at his assigned post. Hansen planned to utilize the period of time to max out his super geno points. It would be ideal if he could evolve before serving in the military. Fortunately, Hansen was only three sacred blood geno points away from maxing out, thanks to the meat Lin Beifong provided him with. During the three months, Hansen could choose to stay in Blackhawk or go home. The roommates of 304 had a last supper with Wang Ming Ming and her friends. Everyone was feeling a bit sentimental. In the end, they went to a holographic karaoke. Shirji Kong sang a song called The Brother Who Shared My Bunk Bed, which made the girls wet their eyes. Brothers, our time had just begun. On the way to conquer the universe, we will meet again. When we see each other, I hope you will still remember my face because everywhere else of my body would be decorated with medals. Zhang Yang jumped on the table and exclaimed in the microphone. All Hansen remembered was that he had a lot to drink and so did everyone else. In the end they hugged each other, shouting and jumping, singing the song called, My Future Is Not A Dream. 
Hansen did not remember much other than that. Although he was able to stay sober using Jade Scan, Hansen chose not to do that. Sometimes, he did not need to be sober in life, and this was one of those times. I know my future is not a dream. I care for each minute. My future is not a dream. My heart beats with hope. I know my future is not a dream. I care for each minute. My future is not a dream. My heart beats with hope. When Hansen left Blackhawk, he did not tell any of his friends, but walked out of the gate alone. Looking back to the place where he had studied and lived for four years, even Hansen felt emotional. The sadness of leaving and the eagerness of reuniting with his family made it hard to tell whether he was happy or sad. My life has just begun. Hansen turned and left, walking into the space harbor and boarded the spaceship that was going to take him back home. There was no place like home. Hansen felt the saying was so true, as the days he spent at home were the most comfortable in years. Eating and chatting with his mother and sister, watching games with Zhang Dan Feng, Hansen felt on top of the world. There were some people in the world that could still be the most intimate ones in his life despite the longest separation. Initially, Hansen was worried that the Nings would look for trouble, but they did nothing. Hansen had been using the Aqua Reaper to watch Ning Yu and had some ideas about what the Nings were doing. After learning about the relationship between Han Sin and Instructor Han, the entire clan were surprised. They only did some investigation and forbade anyone to mess with the Hans. Hansen was very curious what Instructor Han did back in the days to make the Nings terrified of him until now. Thirteen sacred blood evolvers were not easy to cultivate even for a large corporation such as Starry Group. They must have spent a lot of money and effort on it. The disappearance of 13 good fighters did not even make the Nings retaliate. They even asked everyone to avoid conflicts with Hansen, which made Hansen feel quite surprised. However, Hansen also felt more at ease. At least he did not need to worry about the safety of his family when he hunted super creatures in God's sanctuary. The first target was naturally the fire bird on the snow mountain. Before leaving, Hansen still made a lot of preparation. He had to max out his super geno points as much as possible before registering at Daphne, which would take more than just the Firebird. Little birdie, here I come. Hansen set out on his way riding the Golden Growler, feeling quite excited. When there was no one around, Hansen commanded Golden Growler to turn into its largest form and run at full speed. Hansen could not even begin to describe how fast it was. Each step it took would bring Hansen 50 feet closer to his destination. Hansen felt the Golden Growler was some kind of ancient monster. With the Golden Growler, Hansen was confident that he could hunt a lot of super creatures within three months. Otherwise, it would take him a lot of time to just travel. Chapter 408 Iron Fist Demigod The white sand desert looked desolate and dismal under the moonlight. Occasionally, some howling could be heard. The firewood was crackling. Next to the fire, Hansen was barbecuing some meat with the bony fish arrow as the skewer. Meowth was lying on Han Sin's legs in its untransformed state, its eyes fixed on the sizzling barbecue, trying to reach out its paw at times. However, it seemed to fear the fire and quickly withdrew its paw. Don't hurry. It will be ready very soon. Hansen was amused by Meowth. Initially, Hansen was going to hunt the phoenix-like creature, but he had only been there once. Last time he was here, they went to the carbonized tree first and then found the snow mountain. However, when Hansen reached the area, he did not see any burned tree or other familiar signs. Then he had to look for the snow mountain according to his vague memory. After an entire day of searching, he did not spot any mountains. He had to rest for the night and continue the next day. When the barbecue was ready, Hansen gave half of it to Meowth. As the man and the cat were enjoying themselves, messy hoofbeats came from afar and became louder and louder. Hansen heard people talking as well. Fire. There is fire. It looks like someone is over there. Hansen looked up and saw four mounts coming his way. On the back of the mounts were two men and two women. Judging from the mounts and their armor, they were not ordinary people. Whoever dares to come to the Devil Desert should be extraordinary anyways. Hansen took a look and bowed his head, enjoying the barbecue with Meowth. The four rides quickly came close to Han Senator after seeing Hansen. They looked excited and got off their mounts walking toward the fire. A young man with thick eyebrows like caterpillars asked, Friend, can you sell us some of your water? The other two women and one man stared at the water bags next to Hansen, licking their dried up lips. 
It was easy to find food with lots of creatures around in the desert. However, water was rare. Although the blood of the creatures could provide some liquid, but it was like seawater. The more you drank, the thirstier you would get. The group of people had been lost in the Devil Desert for a month, and it was the first time they saw someone. The first thing they were asking was not the way out, but water. The four knew very well that no ordinary guy dared to enter Devil Desert, so they never thought of robbing Hans Senator in addition, they still needed to ask the man how to go out, which was why the young man with thick eyebrows named Jia Cha Feng was being very polite. Without speaking, Hansen threw the bag of water at Jia Cha Feng and continued to eat. Thanks so much. Jia Cha Feng was overjoyed. Initially, he planned to pay a lot for the water. They were in a desert after all, where water meant life. Jia Cha Feng did not expect the guy to be so generous. Don't. Jia Cha Feng took the water back and was about to share it with the rest. The other guy, who was thin, stopped them. He then took out some test paper and dipped it into the water to see if it was poisoned. When he saw the result, the thin guy named Shaoling Feng let out a sigh of relief and let everyone drink. Friend, thank you. How shall I call you? After Shaoling Feng drank some water, he asked. Han Sen, replied Han Sen, caressing Meowth on his laps. Shaoling Feng searched that name in his memory, and it did not ring a bell. Shaoling Feng continued to ask, Friend, do you know how to get out of the desert? If you could take us out, I can pay you well. The payment is unnecessary. I need to hunt here so I'm not going out. Follow that direction and you could get out of the desert in three to four days, Hansen said, pointing at a direction. Friend, if you're willing to lead the way, I can pay you a sacred blood beast soul, Shaoling Feng said. Hansen did not look at Shaoling Feng, but fed a piece of barbecue to Meowth. Even without thinking, Hansen knew that Shaoling Feng was afraid Han San was giving them a wrong direction. It was okay to be wary, but Shaoling Feng seemed to be too nervous and have poor judgment about people. Hansen did not want to bother to talk to him. A sacred blood beast soul was valuable, but Hansen did not want to waste his time on a beast soul that would mean nothing to him. Seeing Hansen was unimpressed, both Shaoling Feng and Jia Cha Feng were surprised. The two girls also looked to Han San feeling incredulous. A sacred blood beast soul was always a treasure. Even they themselves could not stay so calm in front of a sacred blood beast soul. All Hansen needed to do for the beast soul was to lead the way, but Hansen was not considering the option at all. He even seemed to have a look of contempt on his face, which made them regard Hansen more carefully. The name Hansen was well known, but only in military schools and steel armor shelter. Among the aristocrats, few people knew about him. Obviously, Shaoling Feng and Jia Chan Feng were not from Steel Armor Shelter, so they had never heard about Han Sr. The four people looked Hansen up and down for a while, but none recognized Hansen's origin. Friend, have you heard about Iron Fist Demigod? Jia Cha Feng and Shaoling Feng exchanged a look, and the latter asked Han Sr. Jia Sadeo? Hansen looked at Shaoling Feng in surprise. Iron Fist Demigod was quite famous as one of the oldest demigods. Rumor has it that the Jiaz had the heritage of martial arts and was great at fist skills. Iron Fist of the Jiaz was said to be the best hypergeno art in fist skills. Hansen did not know if that claim was true, but Jia Sadeo used those skills to gain his demigod status, which made his family and skills known in the entire alliance. Jia Sadeo did not become a politician but started a business of martial hall to teach students. Different from Ares Martial Hall which took everyone in, all the students of the martial hall run by the Jiaz were children of prominent families and politicians. His name is Jia Cha Feng, and Jia Sadeo is his grandfather. Lead the way for us, and we can make sure you join the Iron Fist Martial Hall. Iron Fist Demigod will instruct you himself, said Shaoling Feng, pointing at Jia Cha Feng. Chapter 409 Not Interested being able to be instructed by Jia Sadeo himself was the dream of many among the celebrities and aristocrats. However, Hansen was not really interested in it. If it was before, Hansen would consider it. Jia Sadeo was a demigod after all, and Iron Fist was one of the most well-known hypergeno arts. However, since he got his hands on Dongshan Sutra, Hansen had been studying the ancient language. Although he still did not understand everything, the parts that he understood made him overjoyed. Rather than wasting his time on learning Iron Fist, Hansen would rather spend his time on the ancient language. 
If he could understand Dong Shin Sutra, it would be very easy for him to become a demigod himself. However strong Iron Fist was, it could never make him tear the vacuum apart, let alone teleport to God's sanctuary using his own body. I thank you for that, but I really have my own thing to do. I think you should leave on your own, Hansen spread his hands and said. The four were even more surprised hearing Hansen's words. They did not understand someone would turn down the offer to become a student of a demigod. Friend, maybe you don't believe me. That is okay. I will teach you some skills in Iron Fist right now. How about you lead the way after learning? Jia Cha Feng thought about it and decided that Han Sen must think they were lying, which was the only explanation for him being dismissive. Han Sen was speechless, as he was really not interested in learning Iron Fist. However, since the group of people did not mean him harm, Han Sen did not want to let them down. He asked Jia Cha Feng, on your way here, have you seen a snow mountain? I'm looking for that mountain, and if you could take me to find it, I could take you out after finishing my business. Jia Cha Feng was dazed, and then understood that Han Sen was sincerely not interested in learning Iron Fist. He blushed. Snow Mountain, are you talking about that one? Hearing Han Sen's words, one of the girls suddenly looked at him and asked, Are you talking about a large mountain with only its top covered in snow? Yes. Did you see it? Han Sen was overjoyed. He was only trying his luck, because if they had approached the mountain and ran into the Firebird, it was very unlikely that they could survive. We did see it, but there were some strong creatures nearby, and we did not dare to approach. Said the girl, That is great. If you take me there, we could go out together after I finish my thing, said Hansen hastily. Friend, you're not trying to hunt those evil goblins? I think you should forget about it. There are at least a thousand of them, among which at least twenty are mutant and one is sacred blood. Such a group would take more than just a few people, not to mention you are all alone, said Shaoling Feng. Hansen frowned. Last time he was there he did not see any other creatures. However, according to the four, there were also a group with a sacred blood king. It was the same for Hansen either way. He would be happy to see a group of creatures there since he still needed three more sacred blood geno points. If you're willing to take me there, I will be very grateful. If not, you could show me the direction and I will be equally grateful. Hansen did not want to go together with the group. Although their mounts were good, compared to the Golden Growler, they would be too slow. It would be a waste of time for him to slow down for these people. We could take you there, but do you have enough water for all of us to get out of the desert? After some discussion, Jia Chanfeng asked Han Sr. Water is sufficient. Hansen patted the water bags piling up next to him. He had brought a lot of water because he planned to go to one of the locations Ningyu told him directly after killing the Firebird. Since Hansen had enough water, the group of four felt relaxed. After resting for a night, they were about to set out on the road the next morning. Friend, you have so many luggage. It must have taken you several mounts to bring all of this with you, right? Shaoling Feng asked, seeing all the things Han Sen had brought. Just one, Hansen said and summoned the Golden Growler. He did not want to scare the group and used the smallest form of the lion, which was the size of an elephant. What a magnificent mount! They were still surprised by the Golden Growler. Hansen smiled and did not speak. He lifted everything to the back of the Golden Growler and mounted the lion himself. The five of them started to travel, because the group of four only had one sacred blood mount, and the other three were mutant, their speed was not that great. Feeling upset, Hansen had to control the speed of the Golden Growler to follow the group. Fortunately, the location of the Snow Mountain was not that far. It only took them one day to get there, which was why Hansen was not too worried about time. Hansen got to know the group of four a little better. Jia Cha Feng was the grandson of Jia Sadeo. Shaoling Feng was a student of Jia Sadeo. As for the two girls, the plump one was named Jia Yin, and the slim one was named Xiao Wei. Jia Yin was Jia Cha Feng's younger sister or cousin, and Xiao Wei was Shaoling Feng's older sister. Hansen, your mount must be a sacred blood bee soul? Jia Yin rode next to Han Sen on a mutant antelope beast, asking curiously while checking out the Golden Growler. Yes, replied Han Sen casually. You must be from a prominent family to have such a mount. How come I have never heard of you before? Jia Yin asked, blinking. I am from an ordinary family instead of a famous or aristocratic one. I'm just luckier than others. Han Sen was speaking his mind. Although he was hardworking, his success was largely due to his luck. 
Hearing that Han Sen was not from a prominent family, Jia Yin was even more curious and asked, Then why are you not interested in becoming the student of my grandfather? Don't you know what it means to be a student of Iron Fist Demigod? The other three also listened carefully, wanting to know why Han Sen would turn down an offer like that. I am a free spirit and do not like to go by the rules. If I piss your grandfather off and get my ass kicked, it will do me no good. Hansen answered with a smile. You're funny, Ji Yin and grinned, hearing Hansen's words. Because Hansen was easygoing and they were all of the same age, they quickly started to chat as they marched toward the destination. Look, it's right there. After traveling for a day, Ji Yin suddenly exclaimed, pointing at a mountain far away. Hansen had much better eyesight than Ji Yin. In fact, he had seen that mountain a long time ago. However, Hansen frowned because the mountain looked different from the one he remembered. Chapter 410 Evil Goblins Although this mountain was also covered with snow on the top, but it was much higher and steeper than the one Hansen remembered. Where the Firebird was seen to be a volcano, while this one was much rockier. Is it a mistake? Hansen felt upset because he wasted all day and ended up in a wrong place. We can't go any farther. It is the habitat of the evil goblins in front of us. Jia Chafo was leading the way stopped and asked everyone to pause. Hansen got off the back of the golden growler, climbed up a dune with the rest and looked toward the mountain. The mountain was arid. No plants were growing on it. Even in the desert, it was still an uncommon scene. Different from the white sand in the desert, the rocks on the mountain were black. Only the top of the mountain was covered in white snow. On the black mountain walls, there were many thickly dotted holes, which would make a person with tripophobia vomit. There were many red centipedes as thick as arms climbing out of the holes. The centipedes were about six feet long and looked extremely ugly, crawling around on the mountain walls. Hansen took a closer look at them. Although they looked like centipedes, they had a triangular head on each end of their body which was made of red bones. Connecting each bone was a pair of red hands with only three fingers. As they moved, the small hands were moving like the feet of centipedes, which was creepy to look at. Some of the holes on the mountain were especially wide, about three feet in diameter. Hansen was staring at a big hole and saw a giant evil goblin slithering out of it. The evil goblin was as thick as a barrel and more than 30 feet long. A part of its body was still in the hole, so Hansen could not tell how large it actually was. The giant evil goblin twisted its body on the mountain wall as the hands on its body moved which was sickening. Hansen, that evil goblin king is very scary. I suggest you think twice before trying anything, Xiao Wei whispered. Hansen nodded, but his gaze was still lingering on the giant evil goblin. It looked quite strong. Could it be a super creature? Hansen pondered and summoned the horn bow and bony fish arrow, trying to take a shot at it. If it was just a sacred blood creature, it would not be able to block a sacred blood arrow with the spinning force. What are you doing? Xiaoling Feng quickly held Han Sen's hand down seeing what Han Sen was doing. Since I'm already here, of course I am trying to kill the sacred blood evil goblin, said Han Sen matter-of-factly. Xiaoling Feng became annoyed and said, their bony bodies are as tough as metal. It is difficult for one to hurt them with beast soul weapons on the same level as the creatures. Even if the bow and arrow you're holding are both sacred blood beast souls, the distance is too long for you to hurt the king. Not to mention your weapons might not be sacred blood. These creatures are very petty. If you started to attack them, the whole group will come this way. You might be able to run away on your sacred blood mount, but we will die for sure. You're right. Since that's the case, you can leave first. I will join you after I kill them, Hansen pondered and said. You don't think you can really kill the king alone, do you? Jia Yin stared at Hansen with her eyes wide. Here's the water. Leave now. If I fail and die here, you will have enough water to go out. Hansen threw the majority of the water bags to the guys, only saving a few for himself. The group looked at Hansen in surprise. Hansen had given the majority of his water to them. If they took the water away, it would be difficult for Hansen to leave the desert with the remaining water after killing the evil goblins, if he could kill the creatures at all. The four persons were all confused, not understanding what Hansen was thinking. They had no idea about the Golden Growler's real speed. If the mount went at its full speed, the remaining water was enough for Hansen to come and go several times. Hansen, if you really want to kill the evil Goblin King, maybe we can work together to do it. Xiao Wei felt reluctant to leave Hansen alone since he had given them most of his water. There's no need. Go ahead. 
I could do this alone. Hansen did not want to waste more time. He would kill this goblin king first, and then hurry to find the firebird. Hansen, think about it. These creatures are very fast in the desert. Even with your sacred blood mount, you might not be able to outrun them, Jia Chafon also said. If you don't leave now, I will start to shoot. Hansen aimed his arrow at the evil goblins. Let's go. This guy is crazy. Shaoling Feng did not think Hansen was joking and quickly pulled his sister away. Jia Chafon also pulled Jia Yin away with him. They did not want to cross the evil goblin king. They had once met an evil goblin in the desert, which was only a mutant one. Even so, the situation was extremely risky, not to mention this one was definitely a sacred blood king. In addition, the sacred blood king was also leading an entire group of 20 mutant creatures and a thousand primitive creatures. Once trapped in the group, it did not even matter however good a fighter one was. All of the creatures were poisonous. Once injured by them, one would die most of the times. Be careful. Even when cut in half, the evil goblins would not die immediately. They could still launch deadly attacks. And try not to touch their blood, which is poisonous, Jia Yin said to Hansen before she left. Understood. Hansen's gaze was fixed upon the giant evil goblin king. When the group went far, he pulled the bow to the fullest. Whoosh. Without hesitation, Hansen shot the arrow at the evil goblin king. Chapter 411, Killing Goblin King. The bony fish arrow flashed across the sky and reached one of the two heads of the giant evil goblin king. The evil goblin king quickly stood up like a snake, all the three-fingered hands under its body facing the incoming arrow. A pair of hands grabbed the bony fish arrow, which continued to spin, making strident noises. However, momentarily, many hands covered the arrow and held it down. Even with a strong spinning force, the arrow was caught by the creature. Cheap. The evil goblin king squeaked with its head facing where Hansen was standing. The sound was so penetrating that even people miles away would feel a headache. Boom. As the king squeaked, the evil goblin started to crawl out of all the holes in the mountain wall, which looked like a red waterfall, flooding toward where Hansen was standing. Hearing the sound made by the evil goblin king, the group of four covered their ears and turned back to look at the mountain. The guy really did it. Jia Chafong muttered to himself, looking in the direction of the mountain. He has saved our lives. Should we really leave him alone? Jia Yin was hesitant. What can we do? You all know how strong the evil goblins are. They are so hard to kill and poisonous as well. Even if we could cut them, we would die if we touched their blood, said Xiaoling Feng. Xiao Wei said helplessly, even if we want to save him, it is too late now. Let's wait right here. He has a sacred blood mount, so maybe he could run this far. And maybe we will be able to help him at that point. Jia Chafong nodded and did not speak. All four of them were staring at the mountain, hearing the noises getting louder. Hansen was more happy than surprised to see his arrow held by the evil goblin king. An ordinary sacred blood creature would not be able to stop his arrow, which meant this evil goblin king was very likely to be a super creature. Although he was in the wrong spot and failed to see the firebird, another super creature would be more than welcome. Seeing the evil goblins coming toward him like Red Flood, Hansen quickly summoned the golden rock worm king and put the super pet armor on it. The pet quickly flew toward the evil goblin king. Hansen did not dare to be careless. There were simply too many of the creatures. It would take him a long time to wipe them out. He jumped on the back of the golden growler, which shook its body and roared growing into a small hill and rushing at the group of evil goblins. The giant body of the lion stamped on the evil goblins, killing countless creatures as it ran. The group of evil goblins were like a red pond in the eyes of the golden growler. Although the golden growler was a mount and did not have the ability to attack, it was so huge in size and so tough that even the walls of the shelter could not withstand it. In that sense, it was a weapon of mass destruction as well. Hansen was pleased to see the Golden Growler crushing the group of evil goblins. Hearing the voice telling him creatures killed, Hansen occasionally gained a few beast souls. The seemingly impressive evil goblins were even weaker than earthworms under the paws of the Golden Growler. There was no need for Hansen to move a muscle. The poisonous blood of the dead evil goblins had no effect on the super mount, and there was no way they could reach Hansen who was sitting high. Holding Meowth in his arms, Hansen looked at the Golden Rock Worm King fighting the Evil Goblin King. Circling around the Goblin King in the air, the Golden Rock Worm King attacked it with eight sharp claws. 
The evil goblin king had extended the better half of its body out of the hole, squeaking with its head high. Moving its hands, the evil goblin king was trying to capture the super pet. However, the golden rock worm king was fast and flexible. Although the evil goblin king tried a few times, it failed to capture the super pet and lost a few hands to its sharp claws instead. This way, the evil goblin king became agitated and threw itself at the super pet. Although the super pet hurt the evil goblin king a couple of times, it did not have the absolute advantage. The two monsters kept fighting each other, squeaking at times. With the super pet armor, the evil goblin king could only manage to scratch the armor and could not hurt the super pet. If the fight went on, the super pet would win sooner or later. Hansen was very pleased that the evil goblin king was the match of the super pet. It was almost certainly a super creature. However, Hansen did not want to watch the fight anymore. So he summoned the holy angel and ordered the golden rock worm king to go harder at its enemy. Although the sharp nails of the evil goblin king were stabbing at the super pet, it could not hurt the worm king because of the armor. Boom. The gorgeous figure of the holy angel flashed on the mountain wall. She waved her hand and cut the evil goblin king which was held down by the golden rock worm king in half. Half of the body of the evil goblin king quickly fell from the mountain and made a huge pit in the sand. However, when it landed, the half of the body was still moving. With poisonous blood flowing, it threw itself once again at the golden rock worm king. And even the super pet armor was left with some marks. The holy angel used her hand like a sword. Momentarily, the half of the body was sliced into pieces and stopped moving. The triangular head was even cut into four pieces and exploded. This time, the evil goblin king was completely quiet. Watching the evil goblin king killed, Hansen looked to the hall on the mountain wall, upset. The other half of the evil goblin king's body had disappeared, and Hansen did not hear the voice telling him the creature was killed. And the pieces of the body in the sand were corrupting quickly, which seemed abnormal. Without any hesitation, Hansen took the Golden Growler and the Golden Rock Worm King back and entered the hole with Holy Angel. Chapter 412 Alloy Case in the Cave Why has it become quiet? Jia Yin looked to the mountain with doubts. It's probably finished, Xiao Wei sighed and said. I'll go back to have a look, Jia Chan Feng said and rode toward the mountain. Let's go together. Be careful not to attract the attention of the evil goblins. Xiaoling Feng followed him. The group of people returned to the area of the mountain. What they saw made them feel so appalled that they could not shut their mouths. The bodies of evil goblins were everywhere. The blood had formed a river and the bodies had become a hill. White sand was colored into burgundy by the poisonous blood. Half of the evil goblin king's body was lying on the ground. Although corrupted, it still looked shocking. These, he killed them all. Jia Cha Feng did not know what to say. Who is this person? Shaoling Feng thought with complex feelings. Someone as strong as this was simply beyond his imagination. Where is Hansa? Jia Yin and Xiao Wei had come back to themselves. They looked around but did not see Han Sr. The two guys also looked around and did not see Hansen either. They all had a strange feeling. Initially, they thought they just ran into an ordinary guy. Yet the guy was so impressive that they could not even begin to describe it. At this point, Hansen had already gone deep into the hole on the mountain wall. Inside the mountain, the channels were interconnected like a labyrinth. Hansen commanded the holy angel to scout for him, following the blood of the evil goblin king. After a while, they were still unable to catch up with the creature. If Hansen did not see the blood, he would wonder if he was in the wrong direction. Quite fast, this guy. Hansen put the super pet armor on the holy angel and ordered the holy angel to follow the traces of blood. The super pet in super pet armor was almost invincible in first god sanctuary. There was nothing she would fear. After three to four hours, Hansen eventually entered a large space, which was a cave shaped like a cylinder. The cave looked like the inside of a church tower. The ceiling was about half a mile high, and the stone walls were dotted with holes of different sizes. The traces of blood had disappeared at this point. Hansen frowned at the countless holes on the stone walls. Without any clue, it was impossible to find the evil goblin king with so many holes. Hansen lighted a torch and looked around in the cave. He suddenly saw an alloy case in the corner. Someone had been here before. Hansen was surprised. The case looked like it was the advanced product from the Alliance. It was made of top-notch sea steel that was not only tough but also light in weight. 
making the case more portable than Z-Steel armor and weapons. The case was a bit deformed. It looked like it had been hit hard. The lid was slightly open. Covered in dust and speckles, the case looked quite old and probably had something spilled and tried on it. Hansen checked the style of the case, which looked expensive but old. He did not think it was produced recently. Who could come to this place with the group of evil goblins outside? Or does the mountain have a different entrance elsewhere? Hansen squatted and checked the case carefully. Although the lid was slightly open, Hansen still could not see what was inside. It looked like there was something though. Although modern technology was useless in God's sanctuary, Hansen did not dare to be reckless. He stepped back and asked the holy angel to open the case. The holy angel was fearless. She reached her hand in the gap and pulled the case open. Nothing weird happened. In the case, there were three bottles and a crystal card. Geno Solutions? Hansen looked at the three bottles and felt surprised. Hansen had seen a lot of this kind of bottles. They should be the bottles of Geno Solutions paired with Hyper Geno Arts. These bottles were specially made to contain the Geno Solutions, which had been this way for generations. However, although there were three bottles, only one of them was filled with purple Geno Solution. One of the bottles was empty, and one was broken. Hansen took the full bottle and regarded it. He did not find any notes. Normally speaking, a bottle like this would have a tag to indicate what kind of Hyper Geno Art this solution belonged to. However, this bottle did not have any writing on it. Is it Geno Solution or not? Hansen frowned and examined the crystal card. It was a memory card, which was still intact. However, he could not check it in God's sanctuary. Hansen put the crystal card and bottle away. He looked around and did not see bodies or inscriptions. He wondered why the case ended up here. Hansen walked around in the large cave but did not find anything else. He felt quite upset to let the evil goblin king run away. However, there was no way that he could tell where the evil goblin king was. Even if he wanted to chase after it, he did not know how. As Hansen was hesitating whether he should leave already, he felt the giant cave was shaking and then heard noises like thunder. The rumbles became louder and louder, sounding quite scary. What is it? Hansen listened carefully, trying to tell where the sound came from. However, there were too many caves, so the echo was too loud for Hansen to tell that. He was sure about one thing. Something was coming at him, and it was something big. Chapter 413 Weird Woman Hansen pondered and took back the holy angel. He shifted into the color shifter and leaned against the mountain wall, turning into a part of the rocks. No one could tell he was there. The rumbling continued for a while before it softened. Very soon, Hansen saw the evil goblin king came from a wide hole. The huge body slithered out, which was still more than 60 feet long. The injury on the end of its body was still there, but had already healed. What a large creature. It is still this long when cut in half. It must be at least 100 feet long originally. Hansen regarded the creature, not understanding why it still dared to come out. As Hansen was suspicious, he did not move but watched the creature moving in the cave. The creature did nothing special, but Hansen felt something must be wrong. So he stayed still and watched. Suddenly, he saw something else coming from the same hole where the evil goblin king was. It was a creature that looked like a white rhinoceros with three pairs of legs, looking magnificent. On the back of the white rhinoceros sat a person. Hansen was shocked to see someone else riding a creature in this place, who was also getting along with the evil goblin king. Everything seemed so odd. Hansen could tell that the white rhinoceros was definitely a creature instead of a beast soul pet. A creature had a murderous scent which the pet did not have. He looked carefully at the person sitting on the back of the white rhinoceros. It should be a woman. However, she was wearing a black cloak with a hood, so Hansen could not tell what she looked like. How come there is no human? The woman looked around and muttered to herself before she rode the white rhinoceros back into the hole. Hansen was dazed. The woman sounded like she was not a human herself, but Hansen had never heard a creature would look exactly like a human and could talk. The evil goblin king which only had half its body left followed the woman into the hole. Hansen had now understood that the goblin was a bait the woman sent. Who is that woman? She is so strange. I have never heard that human could control a creature, which is also a super creature. How is that even possible? Hansen felt confused. A long while after the evil goblin king disappeared, he slowly moved his body toward that hole. 
Hansen carefully entered the hole, which was rather wide. When he walked deeper inside, there was a fork. Hansen observed the surroundings and followed one path. The evil Goblin King barely left any traces as its three-fingered hands were quite small. However, the white rhinoceros left some footprints. And he could even hear the hoof beats. Deep inside the mountain, Hansen carefully walked in the labyrinth. After an hour, the hoof beats could no longer be heard. Hansen became alarmed and slowed down. He pondered and shape-shifted again into the color shifter. Very soon, he saw the evil Goblin King again when he entered another big cave. Although it was still inside the mountain, there was a crack on the ceiling where the sky could be seen and light could come through. In the big cave, there was even a stream of water. Hansen saw the woman and the white rhinoceros again. In addition to the woman and the white rhinoceros, many man-made tools were laid around, such as tents, woks, and bowls. It seemed like the woman had spent quite some time in the cave. Hansen stopped breathing and integrated himself with the stone wall, observing the woman someone who could command a super creature. Even Hansen felt surprised by his discovery. It was hard to believe that such a person even existed. If she had been around for a while, then super creatures should have been known to human a while back. How come there was absolutely no news about it? Even the Nings were merely guessing and had never killed a super creature. The woman set up the walk and started to burn a kind of vines underneath. It looks like she was cooking. Then she opened an alloy case filled with bottles and cans. When she started to pour the content of a bottle into the wok, Hansen realized it must be spice. Very soon, Hansen smiled food. He wondered what meat she was cooking which was making him drool. Seeing the meat was about ready, the woman took off her back cloak and got up to fill her bowl. Hansen was eventually able to see what her face, which made him stare his eyes wide and almost scream out loud. There was a white mask made of bones on the woman's face and a pair of purple horns were standing in her long hair like crescents. Sure royalty. How can this be? Hansen was so shocked that he was speechless, unable to believe what he had seen. As the biggest enemy of human in the universe, Shura almost looked the same as men except for the horns. The purple horns were the characteristics of Shura royalty. A royal Shura man had single horn, and a royal Shura woman had double horns. None of these mattered though. What shocked Hansen was the fact that Ashura had made her way into God's sanctuary, which was not supposed to happen. It was not to say that Shura did not have teleport devices. Even if they had none, it would be easy for them to grab one from human in the wars. However, Shura was rejected by God's sanctuary itself. Even with a teleport device, no Shura would choose to enter this space. Human had conducted an experiment to teleport Shura prisoners into God's sanctuary who immediately got sick with the symptoms of flu. As their immune system went down, they all died in God's century within three days, adults and children alike, no matter how strong they were. However, the Shura royalty seemed to have lived in God's sanctuary for a long time already. Chapter 414 Lunatic? Hansen was scared by the idea that Shura might be able to survive in God's sanctuary. Shura's physique was much better than human in the first place. If they were able to survive in God's sanctuary and gain Geno points, the consequences would be dire. Shura had always been conducting research in this aspect, but they had not made much progress. Meanwhile, the Alliance was doing its best to prevent Shura from entering God's sanctuary. Because of the damages Shura would suffer from entering God's sanctuary and human occupation of most of the shelters, Shura had almost no chance at it. Some Shura had risked their lives and tried to enter God's sanctuary, but they were doomed once spotted by human. After all, Shura almost had no ability to fight was entering God's sanctuary. The moment they were seen, they would be killed. Even if they were not found, they would die of sickness in a couple days. Maybe Shura had overcome the issue of surviving God's sanctuary? Hansen felt a chill. If that was true, then a disaster would fall on human. An ordinary Shura adult had the same physique as a human evolver. And a strong Shura fighter would be the same as a human surpasser. With such physique, it would be easy for Shura to kill all creatures and leave none for human. Among black, white, golden, and purple horns, purple horns were the Shura royalties who had the strongest physique. Once older than 10, they could be over 100 in fitness index. Although Hansen did not know how old the Shura woman was, she must be more than 10 years old which meant she definitely had a fitness index beyond 100. 
Once sure like her entered in first God's sanctuary and started a fight with human, Hansen could imagine what would happen. Even Hansen, who only had a fitness index below 30, could already become invincible in first God's sanctuary. Ordinary super creatures only had a fitness index over 40. If the number became over 100, Hansen was covered in cold sweat on the thought as unspeakable fear filled his heart. It was beyond his personal interests. If Shura were able to survive in First God's Sanctuary, it would be the nightmare for the entire mankind. Hansen could not bear to think of that kind of tragedy. He was a man, with his family, friends, and loved ones in God's Sanctuary, so he had to think of the worst possibility. The Shura woman got herself a bowl of meat with soup and realized that she still had her mask on when she tried to eat. She took the mask off and put it away. Hansen then saw her face and was dazed. Although judging from her small purple horns, Hansen knew she was probably young, he did not realize how young she was. She was about 14 or 15 years old, her face round and skin so fair that it was almost transparent. The look in her eyes was quite innocent. Because Shura girls developed early in general, she had a curvaceous body, which made Hansen feel she was older. Her waist-length black hair was tied back. If it was not for her purple horns, she would just be considered a pretty girl. However, because of the horns, Hansen did not dare to consider her as a girl. Even though she was just around 15 years old, her fitness index was definitely over 100 as a Shura royalty. This sweet girl was actually as fierce as Queen, more destructive than super creatures in First God Sanctuary. As Hansen was checking her out, she sat down on something covered by a piece of cloth and started to gobble from the bowl in her hand as fast as the holy angel did. In a short while, she finished all the food in the bowl. When she got up to get more, the piece of cloth was moved, unveiling what was underneath. Hansen was shocked with just a sneak peek. Under the cloth was a shining yellow crystal the size of a boulder. Hansen was very familiar with this kind of crystal. He had seen many of these recently, which were the life essence of super creatures. Although Hansen only caught a glimpse, he was certain that it must be life essence. Judging by the shape of the cloth, there were at least two pieces of life essence underneath. Hansen stared at them without a blink. Although he now had the ability to kill a super creature, it took him a lot of time to find one. He wanted life essence bad. Looking at the Shura girl, Hansen gave up the thought. Hansen could not understand why the Shura girl did not eat the life essence. However, there was no way Hansen could beat her. Not even with the Holy Angel and the Golden Rock Worm King helping him. A fitness level of over 100 was simply matchless in First God Sanctuary. Hansen was always decisive. Although the temptation was huge, he merely hesitated for a moment before he decided to leave quietly. He had to report the existence of Shura to the Alliance, making sure that the Alliance was prepared. Hansen alone could not stop something as big as this. If Shura was really able to overcome the damages they suffered from God's sanctuary, then the entire alliance must be rallied up against them. In addition, the Shura girl was even able to control a super creature, which was shocking. As Hansen was trying to leave, to his surprise, the Shura girl suddenly let out a scream. He turned to look at her and saw her kneeling on the floor, moaning in pain. Her body kept shaking as she huddled up. The evil goblin and the white rhinoceros seemed to be so scared that they each ran away into a stone channel like rabbits. However, they did not dare to go far, but stayed in their own place shivering, checking on the Shura girl from time to time. Bang! Hansen heard a loud noise. The Shura girl who was holding her head and moaning in pain suddenly started to bang her head against the floor, smashing the rock into pieces. Although the rock was broken, her head was not even red but only got dirty with some dust on it. Bang, bang, bang. Hansen watched the girl hitting her head against the rock repeatedly and was shocked. It is Shura girl a lunatic? Watching the Shura girl banging her head on the floor, Hansen could not help feeling an urge to kill her. She looked like she was having a reoccurrence of some disease. Maybe he could take the opportunity to kill her. Chapter 415. Human? On another thought, Hansen was not even sure if he could hurt her with the cursed wolf dagger given how strong she was. The gap between himself and someone with a fitness level over 100 was simply too big. Hansen watched the Shura girl banging her head against the floor in pain with a complex look. He suddenly found that the cave seemed to be very well lit. As he took a closer look, he saw the full moon was shining through the cave from the crack above. Boom. With another hard bang, 
A large pit was formed as all the rocks within a range of a dozen feet were crushed. After that, the Shura girl did not move anymore, but fell in the pit and fainted. The evil goblin and the white rhinoceros then came out of the stone channels. The evil goblin approached the unconscious Shura girl, hesitated, and suddenly opened its mouth and bit at her. Hansen was dumbfounded. He did not know what was going on. A moment ago, the evil goblin was following the Shura girl like a puppy dog, while all of a sudden, it was about to eat her. Maybe this creature was extremely intelligent and knew how strong she was, so it pretended to be enslaved by her until it could find an opportunity to eat her alive. The evil goblin snapped at her body and threw her into the air, using its thousands of hands to tear her apart. Although Hansen was happy to see that, he was shocked when his gaze fell upon the Shura girl. The evil goblin caught half of the Shura girl's body, so her hair was falling in the air. Hansen saw clearly that the pair of purple horns were gone. Hansen could not believe it and rubbed his eyes. As he looked at her one more time, he still did not see the purple horns that represented Shura royalty. What has happened? Did I make a mistake earlier? Hansen was filled with doubts, but the evil goblin was already ready to swallow the girl like a snake. If she was Shura, Hansen would hope this to happen. However, the girl now looked like a completely normal human girl, which made him hesitate. Boom. Seeing that the evil goblin king was about to eat the girl, Hansen gritted his teeth and summoned the holy angel and the cursed wolf dagger, dashing at the evil goblin king. The evil goblin king knew how strong the holy angel was and dodged her attack immediately. However, Hansen was already in its face. He wielded the cursed wolf dagger and made several cuts on the head of the evil goblin king, making it seethe in pain. The girl fell from its mouth. Hansen caught her in the air and flew away, dodging the splashing poisonous blood. The white rhinoceros roared and quickly threw itself at Hansen, running with its six hoofs. As Hansen pointed at the rhinoceros, the golden rock worm king flew at it. Taking this opportunity, Hansen stepped aside and touched the head of the fainted girl, trying to make sure whether she was Shura. Hansen felt nothing. The pair of purple horns simply disappeared without leaving any trace. Hansen felt her head again and again. He could not believe what had happened. He was sure that he did see a pair of purple horns shaped like crescents. However, they were gone just like that. Shura's horns could not be retracted. Otherwise, there would be a million for Shura spies among human. The horns of Shura were connected to their brain. Even if they cut the horns off, there would still be scars where the horns used to be. It was easy to tell when touched. In addition, no hair would grow where the horns were broken, so it was easy to tell. However, this girl was different. Her scalp was smooth and her hair was thick. There were no proof of previous horns, so it was impossible that the horns were knocked off by herself. What could this possibly be? Were the horns just in decoration she was wearing and were smashed just now? Hansen had never heard of such a thing and could not decide what to do with her. I'll leave her alone for the moment, Hansen decided, thinking of the evil goblin, white rhinoceros, and the life essence covered by the cloth. He wanted to leave the girl alone, but there was no safe space in the cave given four monsters were fighting inside. Hansen had to hold her in his arms for the moment. The evil goblin was almost beaten by Holy Angel. Lots of its hands were cut off. Although they were both super creatures, the Holy Angel was obviously the top of the top, even comparable to the adult Golden Growler. The evil goblin, however, was more or less on the same level as the Aqua Reaper. In addition, the evil goblin was hurt in the first place, so it was no match of the Holy Angel. On the other side, the Golden Rock Worm King was against the White Rhinoceros. To Hansen's surprise, the Rock Worm King was at a disadvantage. In terms of both speed and fitness, the rhinoceros was stronger. Hansen put the super pat armor on the rock worm and enhanced its defense. This way, it could compete against the white rhinoceros. Hansen rushed over to fight the evil goblin with the cursed wolf dagger in his hand and his wings flapping. He decided to take the weakest link out first and leave the tough ones for later. The evil goblin was dodging here and there from the holy angel's attack. Hansen took his opportunity used the both heresy mantra and overload, appeared behind the evil goblin, and cut off its triangular head. Bang! The giant body of the evil goblin suddenly became limp. It fell to the bottom, making the entire space shake. Super creature evil goblin killed. No beast soul gained. Life essence available. Meet an edible. The voice suddenly sounded in Hansen's mind, 
but Hansen had no time to lament the lack of bee's soul. He commanded the holy angel to take care of the six-legged white rhinoceros. On the other hand, Hansen went to the disappearing body of the evil goblin and seized a red crystal the size of a football. Chapter 416 A Fortune Hansen glanced at the girl in his arms who was still unconscious. Her clothes were a bit ragged, while she did not get injured at all and only had some red marks. Hansen frowned and checked on the white rhinoceros under the siege of both the holy angel and golden rockworm king. It seemed there was no need for Hansen to do anything. Holding the girl under one arm and the life essence of the evil goblin in the other, Hansen dashed to the tent which was already damaged by fallen stones. He found a quilt in the tent, took it out, and placed the girl on it. He then ran toward the life essence covered under the piece of cloth. As the piece of cloth was lifted, Hansen was bedazzled by the splendid view. Three crystals were placed together. One was yellow, and the other two were blue. The yellow one was the biggest piece, about the size of a boulder. One of the blue ones was the size of a drum, and the other the size of a basketball. Fortune. Such a fortune. Hansen almost jumped up, unable to believe his own eyes. Hansen bent over and licked at the yellow crystal, trying to make sure that it was life essence. As the yellow liquid was swallowed by Hansen, he suddenly heard the voice. Life essence of super creature earth dragon beast consumed. Hansen was overjoyed. He was finally relaxed as these were truly life essence. Mine, they're all mine. Hansen summoned Meowth in its transformed state, put a bag around neck, and started to fill it with life essence. The golden growler was too big in size, so it would be inconvenient for it to leave the cave. Hansen had to put the burden on Meowth. Three life essence crystals, in addition to the ones from the evil goblin and the white rhinoceros which was about to be killed. Hansen was almost certain that he would be able to gain five crystals of life essence at once. These five crystals might even make him max out on super geno points. It was such a huge pie in the sky, which fell right into Hansen's mouth. La Dida, La Dida. I love moving. Hansen paused as he suddenly felt something was wrong when moving the crystals into the bag. Hansen turned around and was suddenly dumbstruck. The girl had already sat up. She tilted her head and regarded Hansen with her wide eyes blinking. Hansen was so happy that he had forgotten about the girl. Seeing she had woken up, Hansen suddenly remembered that she was possibly a sure royalty and was then covered in cold sweat. Hello. Hansen forced a smile and said hi to the girl, thinking, I should not have such bad luck. She does not look like a sure royalty either. The girl did not respond, still staring at Hansen with her eyes wide as if she had never seen human before. Hansen's heart sank. He wondered what she was thinking. At this point, Hansen was holding a blue crystal of life essence in his hand. He was not sure whether he should put it into his bag or put it where it used to be. However, Hansen had already put away the other two pieces. It was too late for him to do anything. Anyone could tell he was stealing. This thing. You have no use of it. So, I will take it away. Hansen said to the girl, holding the blue life essence high. This time, to Hansen's joy, the girl unexpectedly nodded. He put the life essence away and said, You were unconscious just now. That creature tried to eat you, and I saved you. The girl was so strange that Hansen did not know where she came from. It would not hurt if he started to sweet talk. As the saying goes, no one would slap a smiling face. At the very least, Hansen had saved her, although she probably did not need to be saved. The hard snap from the evil goblin did not even break her skin as fair as milk, but only left some red marks on it, which was about what would happen if she scratched it with her nails. The girl blinked and said nothing, watching Hansen transferring the life essence to his bag. Roar! The white rhinoceros suddenly screamed. Hansen saw the head of the white rhinoceros sent into the air by the holy angel. The Golden Rock Worm King was still clinging to the body of the White Rhinoceros, its tail digging into the rhino's meat and its claws holding the rhino's stomach. Super Creature White Jade's Six-Legged Rhinoceros Killed. No Beast Soul Gained. Life Essence Available. Meat Inedible. Hansen heard the voice again. It was the first time that he had killed two super creatures in one day, which no one could believe even if he were to tell someone. The next moment, Hansen became pale because the girl suddenly moved. She was so incredibly fast that even with Hansen's eyesight, he almost lost track of her moves. 
As the girl stepped forward, she almost appeared in front of the golden rock worm king instantaneously, throwing a punch at the pet. She was so swift that the golden rock worm king had no time to dodge, and Hansen did not even manage to take back his pet in time. Boom! The tender fist of the girl hit the golden rock worm king hard. The hole was left on both the super pet armor and the worm king. It was so easy that it looked like the creature and the pet armor were made of paper. Hansen took the golden rock worm king, holy angel, and Meowth back in his mind and ran away immediately, letting the life essence drop on the floor. At this point, Hansen still did not know whether the teenage girl was a sure royalty. However, there was no doubt that her fitness index was over 100. Since she had made a move, Hansen did not have any thought other than running for his life. Unless an evolver like Queen came here, it did not matter how many people came to his rescue. However, in First God's Sanctuary, it was impossible that an advanced evolver could appear. There would be at most some rookies who had just evolved. Hansen just started running when the girl stood in front of him in the blink of an eye, her face almost hitting his. Chapter 417 A Mentally Troubled Girl Hansen was shocked and quickly stepped back. He was about to summon the Holy Angel and the Golden Rock Worm King which was severely injured. Hansen decided to buy himself some time. After all, nothing mattered more than his own life. As Hansen stepped back, the girl did not attack him, but stared at him with her big eyes. There was no hostility on her face. Hansen suddenly had a thought and did not summon the Worm King and Holy Angel. If this girl was trying to attack him, she should have done that a long time ago. However, she did not attack Hansen who was the closest to her but hit Golden Rock Worm King. That probably meant she had no intention to hit Hans Sr. Therefore, if Hansen were to antagonize her with the Worm King and Holy Angel, he would definitely be doomed. Although Hansen was having a thought like that, his eyes were fixed on the girl, still alarmed. Although the girl did not look hostile, it was just the look. One could never predict another person's thought, not to mention how weird this girl was. The girl did not lay a hand on Hansen, but stared at him. It seemed that she was curious. Sister, my name is Hans Senator, how shall I call you? Hansen asked with a forced smile, as he felt awkward, but did not know what to say. Zero. Hansen did not have much hope, but to his surprise, the girl answered him. The voice of the girl had a pleasant tone. Hansen was not sure if she was answering his question. Zero? Hansen asked her with doubt. Zero. The girl said and squatted down, writing zero on the floor with her finger, which turned out to be standard alliance language. Seeing the word written by the girl, Hansen felt more relaxed. The alliance had fought Shura for many years, which was why human would learn Shura language and Shura culture. Shura had also learned human language, but even ordinary Shura did not deign to use the language of human, let alone a Shura royalty. The girl naturally used standard alliance language, which made her more likely to be a human. Zero, this is your first name, right? What is your last name? Hansen asked. Just zero, the girl said without explaining further. She was still staring at Hansen as if there was something on his face. Hansen thought zero did not seem to be too intelligent. He licked his lips and said with a fake smile, we are friends, not enemies, right? Friends, not enemies, Zero nodded and said. Hansen was overjoyed, spread his hands and said, We are good friends, so we don't fight, right? Good friends, no fight. Zero nodded again, agreeing with Hans Sr. Hansen was even more pleased as he felt Zero was indeed a bit dumb, like a three-year-old. Did she hurt her brain when she bangs her head on the floor? Hansen was secretly happy. He walked two steps and pointed at the life essence on the floor, asking, Tell me, can I take these? This time, Zero did not speak but nodded. Obviously, she had agreed. Hansen was on top of the world. Originally, he thought there would be no gain this time as both Golden Rock Worm King and Super Pet Armor were severely damaged, and it was still questionable whether he could survive. Life Essence was out of the question. However, things suddenly took a turn. He still had a chance to take away all the crystals of Life Essence, which was a great surprise to him. Can I really take these away? Hansen pointed at the life essence and then himself, confirming it with Zero again. Yes. Zero nodded heavily. She seemed to be quite serious. Thank you. You are such a good person. Hansen was eventually able to make sure that Zero was out of her mind. She must have hurt her brain just now. 
Otherwise, who would give life essence away? Hansen still felt a bit anxious. He tried to walk to a crystal of life essence, lifted it up, and checked on Zero, who had sat down on the boulder nearby, resting her chin in her hands and watching Hansen with great interest. It seemed that she did not want to fight at all. Since you gave it to me, I will eat it? Hansen reached out his tongue, pretending to be licking at the life essence. Zero regarded him without speaking, her eyes smiling. I will begin then? Hansen licked the crystal. Zero was still smiling at him. It seemed that she was very happy. Hansen saw that Zero meant him no harm and was okay with him eating the life essence and started to lick faster. Zero was still just watching, making Hansen completely relaxed. It seems that she's really hurt her brain. That's much easier. Hansen no longer held back and started to lick away. Life essence of super creature crystal spirit beast consumed. One super geno point gained. Very soon, the better half of the smaller piece of blue life essence was swallowed by Han Senator to Han Sen's excitement. The voice kept telling him how many super geno points he had gained. At this point, Han Sen was certain that Zero who seemed to be troubled mentally did not mean him any harm. In fact, with her ability, if she were to fight him, Hansen could not think of a single way he could save himself from her. The difference in their fitness levels was too big. Even among evolvers, a fitness index of over 100 was the absolute top, not to mention Hansen was still unevolved. This was what was confusing Hansen as well. If Zero was human, with her super geno points maxed out, it will still be impossible for her to have a fitness index over 100. Hansen knew that very well, because according to his estimate, even after he finished evolution in the evolution pool and became an evolver, he would still just be around 60 to 70 in fitness index, which was still much less than 100. Although Hansen did not understand, he had no trouble taking advantage of the situation. Zero seemed to have a troubled mind and meant him no harm, so he could just take the life essence for himself. Hansen summoned Meowth again and picked up the life essence of the white jade six-legged rhinoceros. He put all the crystals of life essence on Meowth's back. Thank you, beauty. So long and I will buy you dinner next time. Hansen waved at Zero, walking out with Meowth. Although Zero meant him no harm, Hansen did not know where she came from, and she was troubled mentally. Who knows if she would become mad again? Hansen decided to be as far away from her as possible. However, when Hansen arrived at the channel where he came from, he found Zero right behind him. It seemed that she was following him silently. Chapter 418 Tattoo In his room at Steel Armor Shelter, Hansen felt a strong headache as he looked at Zero who was sitting opposite him. Back to the day when they were in the cave, Zero insisted on following him in silence. She would walk as Hansen did and stop when he stopped. When Hansen could something, she would eat it without apologies. When Hansen asked her something, she would just nod or shake her head. Hansen fished no information out of her and had to accept this tale. Hansen even tried to run away on the back of the Golden Growler during the middle of the night while she was sleeping. However, after riding the Golden Growler nonstop for more than half a day, as he started to cook lunch, Zero was already waiting next to his pot with her eyes wide. Hansen had thought of all kinds of methods, trying to get rid of her. In his eyes, she was a huge time bomb, which he could not keep around himself. However, after using all he got, he failed to lose her. The only possible way to get rid of her must be violence. However, thinking of the way she left a hole in the super pet armor and golden rock worm king, Hansen dismissed the idea immediately. Hansen took Zero back to the shelter. His original thought was to export the crisis. There were so many people in steel armor shelter, so Zero might focus her attention on someone else and follow that person instead. He could maybe call the police for that person and let the Alliance step in. However, Zero did not follow anyone else other than him. She would go wherever Hansen went like a tag-along. She did not seem to be completely dumb. At least when Hansen went to the bathroom, Zero would not follow him. In the end, Hansen had to take her back to his room in steel armor shelter and watch her with a headache. He had found out nothing about her. Before leaving the cave, he had checked on Zero's belongings which were just ordinary man-made products. There was no way he could tell where she came from and why she would follow himself by examining those things. We are already in the shelter, so you can teleport back home yourself, Hansen said to Zero helplessly. Zero looked back at Hansen and blinked her dark eyes. I'm hungry. Hansen couldn't help holding his forehead, feeling like he had found himself a lot of trouble. 
Little sister, I'm telling you, I will evolve and leave First God's Sanctuary very soon. Even if you stay here, it will not make a difference. Hansen was telling the truth. He was eating the life essence he picked up on the way back to the shelter. At this point, he had 82 Super Geno points and still had two and half crystals left. Once he finished everything, he should be maxing out on his Super Geno points. Zero remained silent. Her eyes were as clear as spring water with no impurity. She gazed at Hansen like that and repeated, I'm hungry. Hansen felt like he was about to go mad, but he had to start cooking. As they were eating, Hansen asked Zero who was filling her mouth with food. So, why did you choose to follow me? Surprisingly, Zero put down the bowl in her hand and stood up. Then Hansen saw her unbutton her blouse and pull it down. Don't. I'm not that kind of person. You think you can tempt me with your beauty? I'm telling you there is no way you could achieve that. I am a... Hansen covered his eyes with both hands and said, while peeking through his fingers. Zero had already pulled her blouse down. She was wearing nothing underneath. However, she had already turned her back to Hans. Senator Hansen suddenly widened his eyes. On the gorgeous and flawless back of Zero, Hansen saw a tattoo, a red tattoo. The tattoo was the shape of a beast which looked like a cat or fox. As red as fire, the head and tail of the beast were connected into a circle. Hansen was naturally familiar with this print. The red pendant Hansen had was exactly the same. Hansen told him that the beast was called Nine Life Cat. The pendant used to belong to Han Jingxi, who never went anywhere without it. On the body of this weird girl, Hansen saw this beast once again, which made him feel surprised. Zero pulled her blouse back to cover her nude body up, walked to Hansen, and reached her hand toward Hansen's chest. What are you doing? Hansen was startled, trying to jump back. However, Zero was too fast. She immediately reached into Hansen's collar and pulled the nine life kit pendant Hansen was wearing. She then released it and stepped back, pointing at the pendant. You're saying you followed me because of this pendant? What do you have to do with it? Hansen looked at Zero incredulously. Zero did not talk to Hansen again but sat back to eat, as if he had heard nothing. Hansen strongly suspected that Zero was not dumb at all. Hansen had never managed to get any information that she did not want to share. Seeing Zero's face, Hansen did not even want to ask again. What is this about? Why would there be a nine life cat on the back of Zero? Is that related to this pendant? What's the relationship between her and Han Jingxi? Hansen looked at the nine life cat dependent with complex emotions. However, Hansen felt like there was no way for Zero to be connected to Han Jingxi. Han Jingxi was someone who lived centuries ago, while Zero was so young. The connection was simply impossible. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Nine life cat should not be anything unique to Han Jingxi. Hansen had to comfort himself. I'm leaving now. You can stay here or teleport back yourself. Hansen used the teleport device in his room and teleported back to the teleport station. He still had the memory card he gained from the cave in his pocket. Maybe he would know something after seeing what was inside. Hansen believed it would not be a coincidence for that alloy case to appear in the cave. Maybe there were some clues about Zero stored in the memory card. Just when Hansen walked out of the teleport device and tried to access the memory card with his comlink, he was suddenly appalled. From the same teleport device, a beautiful girl who had a gorgeous face and long black hair walked out in ragged clothes. It was no other than Zero. Something is definitely wrong. Hansen gazed at Zero, feeling like he had seen a ghost. Chapter 419 Firebird Again the rule about teleport was that you would go out through the same teleport device used to enter God's sanctuary, no matter where you had been in God's sanctuary. If the teleport device was damaged, then the person would be teleported to a device nearby. The rule never changed. Hansen did not believe there would be such a coincidence that Zero teleported into God's sanctuary via the exact same device as he did. It was simply unbelievable. Hansen thought he was able to get rid of her once he left God's sanctuary but it seemed that she could follow him out as well, which made Hansen frown. This girl was a super time bomb, so Hansen did not dare to take her home. However, if he claimed that she was Shura and turned her to the Alliance, judging by her look which was 100% human, the Alliance would only think Hansen was mad or was trying to frame Zero. Hansen was dazed, staring at Zero. Then he suddenly had an idea and decided to turn back to the teleport station, going back to God's sanctuary. Standing in his room at Steel Armor Shelter, 
Ponson closely watched the teleport device in his room. Then, what he worried about the most happened. With a whirl, Zero quickly appeared in the teleport device and came out as her beautiful self. The teleport device in the room of a shelter normally could only be used by the owner of the room. If one did not have a room, one had to use the public teleport device on the plaza. However, Zero was able to use the teleport device in Han Sin's room and ended up in the same spot as he did. When he came back, she was still able to follow him back to his room. Damn it! Why is this happening? Hansen cursed inwardly. But there was nothing he could do about Zero. Hansen teleported once again to the Alliance and was followed by Zero as expected. Although Hansen knew this would happen, he still felt quite upset. It seems that I could only get rid of her as I evolved to Second God Sanctuary. Hansen entered a lounge, trying to read the memory card via a comlink to get some useful information. Very soon, Hansen was disappointed. Although there was a lot of information stored in the memory card, it was mostly about how to manufacture Geno solutions. There was hardly anything else than technological information. Hansen was not really interested in Geno solutions. It was not his specialty, so he did not understand much of it. He found no information on Zero and could not take her home, so Hansen had to return to Steel Armor Shelter. Hansen decided to take Zero to hunt some creatures, since he still needed three more sacred Geno points. With three more sacred Geno points and the remaining crystals of life essence, Hansen could probably evolve and become an evolver. Hansen wondered whether he had run out of his luck, or maybe it was because Zero was following him and brought him bad luck. For several days, Hansen wandered around in Devil Desert, but found no sacred blood creature at all. After he finished eating the life essence, he eventually had 99 Super Geno points, one point from maxing out. What back luck? However, Zero was following him quietly like a shadow. She did not speak or get in trouble at all. Even if Hansen wanted to unscold her, he had nowhere to start. In addition, with Zero's physique, Hansen did not there to piss her off. Once she got mad, God knows what she would do. Hansen had to wander around in Devil Desert. It might be that his luck was finally here. Hansen saw a mountain from afar which looked like a volcano covered with white snow on top. It was exactly the mountain where he had seen the phoenix-like creature. Hansen became overjoyed. As long as he killed the creature, he would be able to gain the last super geno point that he was missing and evolve. At that time, he could get rid of the horrendous time bomb, Zero. The Golden Rock Worm King and Super Pet Armor were almost destroyed by Zero. Currently, they were restoring in Hansen's mind and could not be used in a short amount of time. Hansen quickly summoned the Holy Angel and sent her to probe on the mountain. Hansen still had a lot of reservations about the Firebird and did not want to take the risks himself. The Holy Angel flapped her wings and went to the top of that mountain. She suddenly heard a shrill bird song from the mountaintop as she approached. The strange bird burning with golden and red flames came down from the mountain at the Holy Angel like a phoenix. The long, wavy hair of the Holy Angel was flowing in the wind. There was a grim look in her golden eyes. She flapped her wings and moved away from the incoming Firebird. The Firebird tweeted and came after the Holy Angel. The girl and the bird started to fight in the air. The Holy Angel kept dodging the attacks from the Firebird, unwilling to catch on the flames. On the other hand, the Firebird was also being very cautious, unwilling to show any weakness in front of the Holy Angel. Although the fight seemed to be rather fierce, the two did not exchange too many movements. Hansen saw that even the Holy Angel was afraid of the flames of the Firebird and did not dare to take the risks himself. Hansen had a fitness level even lower than a super creature. Since even the Holy Angel did not want to catch the flames, it would be even more dangerous for Han Senator so, even if he were willing to go, he might not be of much help. However, Hansen was anxious seeing the Holy Angel and the Firebird were pretty even. It seemed that it was hard for them to fight it out. They were both quite conservative and could not beat the opponent quickly. However, Hansen had no solutions to that. If the super pet armor had not been damaged by Zero, the Holy Angel could simply put on that armor, which might defend her from the flames of the Firebird. The Firebird might have been killed already if that was the case. Such bad luck. Hansen shot a glance at Zero who was standing next to him and felt quite upset. After seeing Zero, Hansen's eyes suddenly lit up. He thought, I wonder if he would help me if I ask her to kill the Firebird. She is not interested in the life essence anyway, so I don't need to worry about her keeping the life essence for herself. Ahem, Zero. 
Can you do me a favor? Hansen cleared his throat and asked. Zero did not even look at Han Senator. She suddenly jumped up and reached the mountain in just a few moves. With a long jump, she reached out a hand and grabbed at the firebird that was fighting the holy angel. Chapter 420 Preparation Before Evolution After Zero threw herself at the firebird like a cannonball, she went through the burning body of the firebird and appeared on the other side, landing heavily on the mountain's feet and even broke a part of the mountain. In Zero's hand, there was a red and golden spirit wiggling like flames. The firebird quickly issued a scream as its body made up of flames simply exploded and turned into fireworks. Zero jumped back to Han Sin and threw the spirit at him without saying anything. She then stood next to Han Sin like she always did. Ahem. Thank you so much. Han Sin flushed. He never treated Zero well, while Zero finished what he was trying to accomplish for a long time, which embarrassed him a bit. Zero did not reply and gave Han Sin a sweet smile, her teeth glistening through her soft lips. Hansen did not have any time to speak, because the red and golden spirit in his hands was scorching, almost turning his hands into barbecue. Hansen quickly summoned the cursed wolf daggers and slashed it at the spirit. Super creature Desert Bird killed. Beast soul of Desert Bird gained. Life essence available. Meet an edible. As the voice sounded in Hansen's mind, he almost screamed out of excitement. Another super beast soul. How lucky. He caught a red and gold crystal the size of a bullet in his hand and threw it in his mouth without hesitation. Although it was kind of a waste, he had no use of the life essence even if he saved it for later. There was no way he could sell it to someone else either. Therefore, Hansen simply ate the whole thing. Life essence of desert bird consumed. One super geno point gained. Super geno points maxed out. Hansen realized that he had finally maxed out on his super geno points even earlier than he maxed out on sacred geno points. Hansen looked to his mind with joy and saw his newly gained super beast soul. Type of beast soul of super creature desert bird, aura. Hansen almost laughed out loud. It was a beast soul aura, which was very rare. Hansen had felt the effect of flame lieutenant was somewhat lacking. Having gained a super beast soul aura, he had something to replace it with. Although he was about to be ready to evolve, Hansen did not rush. After all, he still had more than two months left before he had to report to Daphne. He could still do a lot of things during this period of time. Hansen summoned the Golden Growler and took Zero to those locations indicated by Nina. Then he indeed found a lot of super creatures. 90% of the creatures found by Starry Group were super creatures, which was surprising. Only a few were special sacred blood creatures. Although super creatures were rare, they could still be spotted. The only reason that no one had discovered their existence was that nobody was able to kill them. The reason Hansen went to seek those creatures out was not to kill them. Hansen who had already maxed out on his super geno points did not need to hunt super creatures anymore. The biggest benefit would be superb beast souls. However, even with super beast souls, he would not be invincible in second god sanctuary. Even if he killed those creatures, he might necessarily gain their beast souls. However, Hansen still looked for all the creatures one by one. He found all the super creatures he could find and defeated them one after another. Hansen had two purposes. First, he would like to practice his fighting skills. Second, he would like to lay a good foundation for Han Yin. Haley was so young that she would not come to God's sanctuary for years. It would be impossible for Hansen to wait for her, so he had no chance to transfer the super beast souls to her. In the future, she had to kill super creatures on her own. Hansen had already learned the strengths and weaknesses of the super creatures, so he could teach Han Yin all about them in the future, if she had that kind of ability to hunt them down. If Han Yin did not have that kind of ability, there was no need to expect her to max out on super geno points. If I am here, I will never let Han Yin suffer. If she could max out on super geno points, that would be the best. If not, that's quite okay as well. Although Hansen thought that, he would still do everything he could for Han Yin. In the central office of the special squad, Zhang Jinhong was handling some urgent files when he heard a knock on the door. Jiang Xing, if it is not important, don't disturb me today, Zhang Jinhong said after seeing it was his assistant Jiang Xin. It was not easy to be the director of special squad. Not only did he have to manage his crew well, but he also needed to handle some stupid business, which made him so impatient that he almost wanted to scold someone. Director, the head of a special squad submitted a beast soul trade application, 
Jiang Xing said with a complex expression. Don't bother me with this kind of thing. Ask him to do it on the internal platform by the rules. Do I need to teach you that? Zhang Xinhong was quite upset that Jiang Xing would bother him with such trivial matter and said harshly. The head of that special squad wanted to trade for a quota of protection for his family member. Jiang Xing knew Zhang Xinhong's temper quite well and understood he was under a lot of pressure. So Jiang Xing was not upset, but maintained the complex look on his face. Everyone needs protection. Do they think the action team of the special squad all have six arms? The matter troubling Zhang Xinhong initially was about protection as well, which made him even more and angry when hearing Jiang Xing. However, Zhang Xinhong had nothing against Jiang Xing, so he calmed down and said, because he is one of us, we should give him priority. However, recently we are short of good men since we lost a few brothers in order to protect those bastards. Ask him to wait. We will figure it out later. Jiang Xing continued with an even more odd look. Director, that person did not want protection at the moment. But a few years later. Nonsense. Why would he apply for something coming into effect in a few years? Is he trying to add to our workload? Zhang Zhenhong thumped the desk in madness. Director, I think you should probably first look at the list of beast souls he submitted. Jiang Sheng placed a document in front of Zhang Zhenhong. What is there to look at? Initially, Zhang Zhenhong was quite annoyed. However, after glancing at the list, he swallowed his words back and widened his eyes. Chapter 421 Biggest Problem Sacred Blood Beast Soul Aura Sacred Blood Beast Soul Add-on Sacred Blood Shape-Shifting Beast Soul Sacred Blood Beast Soul Weapon Sacred Blood Wings Zhang Zhenhong could not help reading the Beast Soul list out loud. His voice became more grim every time he finished reading one. Even his hand holding the document was shaking. He knew very well what these Beast Souls meant. Although humans had developed in God's Sanctuary for almost two decades and there were more and more who could kill a Sacred Blood creature, it did not mean it was an easy thing to hunt sacred blood creatures. More than 90% of humans could never hunt a sacred blood creature, let alone gain a sacred blood blood beast soul. However, the beast souls listed in this document were almost all the most outstanding sacred blood beast souls. Especially the sacred blood beast soul aura, which was the blessing of any team. Other beast souls were also highly coveted. Although all Zhong Zhenhong saw were names on the list, they were enough to make him feel shocked. So many top-notch sacred blood beast souls all belong to the same person. He could not imagine who this person must be. Even if he was the descendant of some impressive figure, it was still very hard to collect all these beast souls. If these sacred blood beast souls were used on a special squad, Zhang Zhenhong could imagine how awesome the special squad would become. It would be much easier for them to hunt sacred blood creatures in the future. In Zhang Zhenhong's eyes, these top-notch sacred blood beast souls could be used to make an elite team. If Zhang Zhenhong were to learn that all he had seen was only a part of the Beast Souls Han Sinon, while the rest were sold to Lin Bei Feng and Su Xiaoqiao, his chin might even fall to the floor. Zhang Zhenhong quickly turned the document to the last page, because he could not wait to see who it was to own all these sacred blood beast souls. He could not believe that someone like this was in the special squad, and he could not put a finger on someone immediately. Normally speaking, those who worked for the special squad would not be the descendant of a celebrity. People with prominent backgrounds would more likely be those who enjoyed the protection from the special squad and never needed to protect anyone else. Therefore, Zhang Zhenhong could not imagine who would have such impressive collection in the special squad. Hansen, Seeing this name, Zhang Zhenhong couldn't help feeling dazed. Director, do you want to speak to him? He is still waiting for a reply. Seeing that Zhang Zhenhong had finished reading, Jiang Xin followed up. Of course, these beast souls are crucial to us and we must have them. What are his requests? Zhang Zhenhong said seriously. He is asking for a quota for his sister to be protected starting from the moment she entered God's sanctuary. In addition, he had asked us to send sacred blood beast souls of four specific types to his sister as soon as possible after she entered God's sanctuary. Jiang Sheng explained Han Sin's request in details. After hearing that, Zhang Zhenhong pondered and then said, with Han Sin's background, I am surprised that he is able to earn such a fortune. Contact him and agree to what he asked. Prepare a contract and sign it as soon as possible. Because of Qin Xian, Zhang Zhenhong had paid attention to Han Sen before. However, previously, he was still doubtful about Han Sen's ability, especially when Han Sen disappeared in God's sanctuary for a long while. 
which made Zhang Zhenhong quite disappointed in him. However, after seeing the beast souls of Han Sen, Zhang Zhenhong found that he had given Han Sen too little credit. The man discovered by Lady Qin was indeed extraordinary. It seems that Han Sen is indeed a rare talent. I wonder where he would end up after entering Second God's Sanctuary. I hope that he could return to the special squad as soon as possible, because it would be such a waste for a talent like this to be wandering around. Zhang Zhenhong made a note in his comlink and wrote down Han Sen's name, which meant he would pay special attention to Han Sr. Han Sen did not sell most of his beast souls but used them to purchase an insurance for his sister, helping her grow fast. In Han Sen's eyes, there was nothing in the world more important than the safety of his family, so the beast souls were quite well spent. In addition, the four types of beast souls he requested for his sister would be immensely helpful when she was about to kill a super creature, so it was a good deal after all. However, Han Sen did not know where he would be assigned in Second God's Sanctuary, so it was impossible for him to trade his beast souls for some beast souls of Second God's Sanctuary. He had to arrange for that after she evolved. But Han Sen had no use of mediocre beast souls. Although he traded away most of his sacred blood beast souls, he still had all the super beast souls and the sacred blood beast souls that were indispensable to him. Currently, Hansen had seven super beast souls in total. They were Water Reaper, Cursed Wolf, Bloody Slayer, Golden Growler, Golden Rock Worm King, Holy Angel, and Desert Bird. The sacred blood beast souls would not be that useful in Second God's Sanctuary, so Hansen traded most of them away, only keeping Beetle Knight, Fairy Queen, and Meowth. Initially, Hansen also wanted to keep Purple Feathered Dragon and Color Shifter. However, after looking through the information about Second God's Sanctuary, Hansen found that there were a lot of flying creatures in Second God's Sanctuary, many of which had much higher speed than the wings he had currently. Therefore, the Sacred Blood Wings were not that valuable anymore. In addition, he had two Super Pets which could both fly. He could totally do without the Beast Soul Wings. Color Shifter was not that useful in Second God's Sanctuary either. If he was to hide himself, changing the color alone was no longer enough in Second God's Sanctuary, where there were many creatures that had very strong sense of smell and perception. They could probably sense his body temperature. In the end, Hansen gave up the Color Shifter as well. Keeping Meowth was simply for sentimental reasons. He had really considered Meowth as his own pet. The doppelganger that the Beetle Knight could turn into would still be very useful in Second God Sanctuary, so he decided to keep it as well. As for the Fairy Queen, it was not easy to find a humanoid shape-shifting beast soul like that, not even in Second God Sanctuary. In addition, it was Han Sen's reward of the contest, so he kept it as well. At this point, Han Sen was still faced with one difficult problem. Without solving that problem, he could not evolve with a peaceful mind. The problem was not zero, of course. Although Zero was also a problem, Hansen believed he should be able to get rid of her after he evolved to Second God Sanctuary, which was why he was not that worried about it. The thing worried Hansen the most was the Black Crystal. It could even feed and help creatures evolve. If he could continue to use such a treasure in Second God Sanctuary, it would be very helpful to his cultivation. If he was able to farm a super creature in Second God Sanctuary, or even just a few of Sacred Blood creatures, he would become strong much faster. If he was able to get some beast souls out of it, it would be even better. The only issue was that Han Sen was not able to take back Crystal out of God's Sanctuary. It was part of the rules of God's Sanctuary. Except for beast souls, nothing in God's Sanctuary could be brought out. Han Sen had tried for a lot of times, and unfortunately, the same rule applied to the Black Crystal. Chapter 422, Evolution. If Han Sen could not take the Black Crystal out, then the Black Crystal could only be kept in his room in Steel Armor Shelter. However, after Hansen evolved, once he teleported out of God's Sanctuary, he would appear in Second God's Sanctuary the next time he teleported back. In other words, First God's Sanctuary would have nothing to do with him, and the room at Steel Armor Shelter would no longer belong to him. There was no way Hansen would let go of such a treasure. Watching the Archer Crow that had just became a sacred blood creature, Hansen kept thinking, if he were to take away the Black Crystal, Hansen could only think of one possibility, which was to swallow it, like eating the meat or life essence. Although he might not succeed, that was the only way left. However, Hansen was not sure whether the Black Crystal would harm his body after he swallowed it. 
Although it was beneficial to creatures, it did not mean it was the same case for humans. The plants in God's sanctuary were the same way. Eating those plants might be helpful to super creatures like the turtle, but it might have strong side effects on humans. If one were to try the plants out, one would very likely die from them. Even if something was not harmful in the first place, there could be too much of a good thing. The black crystal could make a super creature easily, which meant it had immense energy inside. Han Sen's body was not strong enough at the moment, so if the energy of the black crystal exploded after he swallowed it, maybe he would die as well. It was impossible for him to give it up, while the only possible method was very risky. Even Hansen was usually quite decisive, he became hesitant this time. Hansen looked at the archer crow. There was no need for him to wait for the bird to evolve into a super creature anymore. It would be pointless for him to do that, and he did not have time for waiting either. Hansen killed the sacred blood archer crow and cooked it. After eating the creature, he had filled up the last three sacred geno points, maxing out on his sacred geno points as well. Ordinary, primitive, mutant, sacred blood, super, all five types of geno points were eventually maxed out. He might be the first person in human history who had maxed out on all the geno points for real. Hansen could clearly feel the immense power in his body. He was certain that all aspects of his fitness were over 30. Once he evolved in the evolution pool, his fitness would have another leap. Should I eat it or not? Hansen took the black crystal in his hand, unable to decide. After a long while, Hansen still put the black crystal away. Even if he were to eat it, he would do that after he revolved. At least he would be much stronger and more capable to cope with any accident. There was a detailed description of evolution process on the Skynet. The process itself was basically risk-free, so Hansen was not really worried. He wanted to finish evolution before registering at Daphne so that he could become a sacred blood aristocrat in the Alliance immediately, which would give him a lot of benefits the commoners did not have. These days, Hansen had been searching for more information about Shura on the Skynet. According to the research in the Alliance, it was not only difficult for Shura to survive in God's sanctuary, they could not gain geno points like human either. Even after eating the meat of creatures, their bodies would not become stronger like human. In addition, Shura could not use a beast soul either. If Shura wanted to enhance their fitness, they could only do so by practicing Shura martial art, and there was no other way. However, human could use God's sanctuary to improve their genes. In that aspect, Zero was similar to Shura because she had no interest in life essence. However, judging by Zero's appearance, she was 100% human. Hansen regarded her and could not see Shura in her. Forget about it. After I enter Second God's Sanctuary, I will no longer see her, so whatever. Hansen walked out of his room and entered the Evolution Palace in Steel Armor Shelter. In the Evolution Palace that looked like an ancient temple, there was a deep rectangular pond located in the center of the palace. A mysterious statue of Beast Head was guarding the pool from each corner, spouting liquid that was almost transparent from their mouths. Without hesitation, Hansen took off all of his clothes off and walked into the pool, immersing his body in the lukewarm liquid in the evolution pool. In the liquid, Hansen felt he had become an embryo. He felt like an unborn baby, all of his body cells developing joyfully, bringing him to a rebirth. The feeling was hard to describe. There was no heat or coldness, and no stimulations. The growth was so natural that it felt a part of his own growth. It felt like puberty again but it was not a real puberty. The growth was inside out. In the liquid, he did not feel suffocated at all, but extremely comfortable. The newborn strength grew in his muscles, bones, veins, and cells, making him feel like he could destroy the whole world with just one punch. Hansen understood that it was a hallucination brought by the rapid growth of strength. However, the feeling was fascinating. All of his spores were open. The waste and dirt seemed to have left his body making Hansen feel more and more light and relaxed. The impurities of his body fell deep down the pool. Hansen felt like he was a sacred soul that had reborn with all his sins purified. The feeling was so wonderful that Hansen almost moaned out loud. No wonder so many people are pursuing evolution of the body. The feeling of evolution is magnificent. It is almost like a rebirth, making the old body shine with youth again, Hansen thought. However, he knew it was not finished yet. He had to wait until he heard the voice, which would tell him this evolution was successful. In addition, Hansen wanted to enjoy this fantastic feeling for a while longer. 
It was as good as having sex with the woman he loved, but it was a completely different feeling. It was more like a person who had been sick for a long time was suddenly cured. All the pains and sickness went away in a moment. The cleanse was so thorough that one might even cry. Hansen did not cry, but he totally enjoyed it. Evolution successful. Status of Evolver gained. 100 years added to lifespan. Super Body King Spirit gained. Hansen. Super Body King Spirit. Status. Evolver. Lifespan. 300. Requirement for next revolution. 100 Geno Points. Geno Points gained. 0. Chapter 423. Black Crystal. Hansen was dumbstruck by the two words, King Spirit. There were many evolvers among humans. In fact, the majority of humans were evolvers. Unevolved persons were usually between 16 and 30 years old, while the majority of humans between 20 to 300 years old were evolvers. Most people would stay in this status their whole life, and only a few could become surpasser. It was not because average evolvers could not gain 100 geno points, but because Third God Sanctuary was too dangerous. If one's fitness index was too low, it was very likely for one to die in Third God Sanctuary. There have been so many lessons that most people would rather stay in Second God Sanctuary all their life, which made Evolvers the majority among human. There were hundreds or even thousands of billions of Revolvers. However, among all of them, including those who had evolved with their sacred Geno points maxed out, Hansen had never heard their game body had a name. An Evolver with mutant Geno points maxed out would gain a mutant body, while an Evolver with sacred Geno points maxed out would gain a sacred body. There was no other name to it. However, after Hansen's super body, there was a name, which was King Spirit. The two words made Hansen feel surprised and excited, not knowing what it meant. He checked the introduction of super body King Spirit, which was so concise that it was just one sentence. King Spirit, King rules the world all spirits shall bow. The simple sentence suddenly made Hansen change his look, because he thought of many things all of a sudden. Second God's sanctuary was vastly different from the first. There were no natural human shelters for humans to rest inside. There was nothing around the teleport devices. Other than that, humans needed to fight on their own for everything. Creatures in Second God's sanctuary were more organized than in the first, and there were many spirit shelters ruled by spirits. Spirits were different from creatures. Most of them looked similar to humans. They could be male or female, but their body was not made of flesh. Unless their spirit stones were destroyed, they were basically immortal. As long as the spirit stones were there, a spirit could always be reborn in the spirit stone even if he or she was killed. In addition, spirits had the ability to control creatures. As long as there was a spirit shelter, most of the creatures in the region would be attached to the spirit and form a creature troop. Of course, advanced creatures would not be controlled by less advanced spirits. The status and ability of spirits determined their ability to control creatures. Under the control of spirits, there had been many incidents of creatures attacking human shelters. If humans were not strong enough, it was normal for them to be killed in Second God Sanctuary. One must truly kill a spirit by going into the spirit shelter and crushing the spirit stone. Of course, one could also take ownership of the spirit stone and gain the allegiance of spirits. However, spirits rarely showed obedience to humans. The more advanced the spirits were, the harder it would be for humans to gain their allegiance. Most of the spirits would rather detonate their own spirit stones before they bowed to humans. Therefore, not a lot of people had spirits in Second God Sanctuary. Spirits were different from beast souls. Beast souls were merely tools that needed to be controlled by humans. However, spirits had their own thoughts and intelligence and could fulfill tasks on their own. In addition, the spirits that had shown allegiance to humans would lose the ability to control creatures while gain the ability to use beast souls like humans. In addition, once the spirits swore allegiance, their life and death would be determined by their masters. Many humans thought of the ownership of spirits something to brag about and something to symbolize their social status. If the spirit and king spirit referred to the same spirit, did it mean Hansen could ask any spirit to give him allegiance? That would be an incredible ability. However, it was just Hansen's own guess. He still had no idea whether it was true. He had to find out when he went to second god sanctuary and saw a spirit. Although Hansen was happy, he was not too excited because he was still worried about the Black Crystal. 
Hansen wanted to teleport to the Alliance right away to test his current fitness. However, before solving the issue of the Black Crystal, he could not go out yet. After leaving the Evolution Pool, Hansen felt the air seemed to have become heavy. The impurities started to enter his body like dusts. Hansen suddenly understood why Evolvers could not stay in First God's Sanctuary for long. After the evolution, one's body became so pure like spring water. The longer an Evolver stayed in First God's Sanctuary, the more impurities would enter his body, making his body more and more dirty. If the impurities were a small amount, his body could reject them. However, if an Evolver stayed too long, his pure body could never be recovered. Hansen was unwilling to stay in First God's Sanctuary for too long. He had finished all the business he should attend to. At this point, he had only one last thing to do. After returning to his room, Hansen held the black crystal in his hand. After a long while, he gritted his teeth and put the black crystal into his mouth. Hansen was standing in the teleport device. Once anything happened, he would teleport immediately back to the Alliance. Since Qin Xian was the station master of the teleport station, he would seek her help immediately. There was a medical team in the teleport station who might be able to save him. Of course, that was the worst-case scenario. Even if someone found out about the Black Crystal, it would still be better than death. However, the scenarios Hansen was imagining did not happen. He swallowed the Black Crystal as if he had swallowed an ordinary stone, feeding nothing. There was no heat or coolness or swelling. It was almost like the Black Crystal had no use at all. Hansen did not dare to be careless. There were many radioactive minerals in the universe that might affect the functions of one's body in the long run. One might get severely sick or even die. Hansen took a deep breath and looked around in the room. Making sure that he had nothing left except for Zero, Hansen smiled to Zero who was regarding him with wide eyes and teleported out of steel armor shelter. Zero followed Hansen out, but Hansen paid her no mind. He ran to the self-service scanner at the teleport station, swiped the card for a scan, and then scanned his own body. After seeing the holographic image in the scanner, Hansen was dazed. He scanned a couple times more, and the result was the same. There was no black crystal in his body. Maybe I still failed to bring the black crystal with me? Hansen became extremely disappointed. In the past, many people teleported immediately after swallowing the meat of an entire creature, wishing to bring the meat to the Alliance. However, although they were teleported back to the Alliance, the undigested meat was still left in the shelter. Hansen thought the Black Crystal was also left in his own room at Steel Armor Shelter. However, Hansen immediately felt something was wrong. He had been paying attention to his own body and did not look at his mind. Feeling disappointed, he no longer paid special attention to his body and felt something unusual in his mind. Chapter 424 Unsettling in the Mind Hansen looked at his mind and saw the Cursed Wolf, Golden Growler, Holy Angel, and other Super Beast souls were sitting in a circle, staring at one thing greedily with fierce looks. Meowth and Beetle Knight were standing afar, clearly coveting the item as well. However, they were afraid of the seven Super Beast souls and did not dare to come any closer. Hansen's eyes fell on the item in the center of the Super Beast souls and became overjoyed. The Black Crystal which he failed to find in his own body had somehow entered his mind and hovering there. What the beast souls were eyeing was exactly the Black Crystal. How did this end up in my mind? Can I still take it out? Hansen focused his mind on the Black Crystal, but it did not move at all. Obviously, it was not like a beast soul which would respond to Hansen's thought. Hansen frowned slightly. Since the Black Crystal could not be moved at his thought, it would be difficult to get it out. Glancing at the beast souls that were trying to take the black crystal for themselves, Hansen suddenly thought, maybe this black crystal could be fed to not only creatures, but also beast souls? Hansen looked around and found that he had sold most of his beast souls, except for the super beast souls, Meowth, and Beetle Knight, as well as a few primitive beast souls that he did not manage to sell. Those primitive beast souls were shivering far away from the crystal, unable to bear the horrendous aura of the super beast souls. If they could, they probably would have wet themselves already. Hansen controlled a primitive copper-toothed beast to walk toward the black crystal. The primitive beast soul looked incredulous and surprised. However, it was quivering under the glare of the super beast souls. Even the super beast souls could not disobey Hansen's order. They had to watch the primitive beast walking toward the black crystal. 
Hansen was simply testing on the copper-toothed beast to see if the black crystal could be fed to be souls the same way it was fed to creatures. Once Hansen made sure there was no risks, he would then feed the black crystal to the advanced beast souls. As the copper beast was walking toward the black crystal in fear, a figure suddenly moved on its own, grabbing the black crystal before the primitive beast. It was the holy angel. Hansen frowned. Ever since the holy angel swallowed the meat of the golden growler, she became somewhat different. Sometimes she would act voluntarily, although it was still within certain boundaries. Hansen initially wanted to order the holy angel to let go of the black crystal but hesitated as the holy angel looked at him expectantly with puppy eyes, yearning for the black crystal. Thinking of the fact that the holy angel could further evolve, Hansen decided to let her have it. Since she wanted it so much, it should not be harmful to her. With Hansen's order, holy angel became overjoyed and swallowed the black crystal in her hand. Hansen was dazed. If he knew this was an option, there was no need for him to take the risks and swallow the black crystal. He could have fed it to one of his beast souls. Indeed, I am still too young. In the future, I must think twice before I act. Hansen criticized himself inwardly. Luckily, nothing went wrong this time. After the holy angel swallowed the black crystal, she suddenly huddled up, her body glistening with holy aura as if she were in heaven. The aura quickly turned into a gigantic cocoon of light, hugging the holy angel. And then everything became calm again. The cocoon of light was hovering in Hans Sin's mind, throbbing with a special rhythm of life. All the other beast souls became disappointed and scattered. The most disappointed among them was the copper-toothed beast. Hansen looked at the cocoon of light, which did not seem to be changing anymore. Hansen decided not to pay attention to his mind for a while. I wonder what the holy angel would become after another evolution? Hansen felt expectant and excited. The black crystal could be fed only to the creatures but also the beast souls. If the black crystal could make primitive beast souls turn into sacred blood beast souls, and even super beast souls, then its ability was simply appalling. Although Hansen was strong in fitness, it will still take him some time before he could kill a sacred blood creature in Second God Sanctuary. It was certain that the sacred blood creatures in Second God Sanctuary all had a fitness level above 100. As for the super creatures in Second God Sanctuary, since no one had ever killed one so far, Hansen had no idea how strong they were. If the Black Crystal could be fed to be souls of Second God Sanctuary and turn them into super beast souls, then Hansen would not suffer as much on his way to hunt super creatures in Second God Sanctuary. However, it was just Hansen's own wish. He did not know how effective the Black Crystal was yet. After going out of the scanning device, Hansen looked at Zero who was waiting for him outside and thought, This time I enter God Sanctuary again, I will appear in Second God Sanctuary, so there would be no way for you to follow me anymore. In order to get rid of Zero, Hansen directly walked toward the teleport device, took a deep breath, and chose to teleport. This was his first time to enter Second God Sanctuary, so the location he would be teleported to was random. Hansen was praying that he would be sent to somewhere ruled by humans, which would be much more conducive to his cultivation. If unfortunately, he was sent to a place where there were all creatures with no human, or where there was a large spirit shelter, it would be difficult for him to even survive. Whichever god is listening, please give me blessings to end up in a nice spot. Hansen was praying to all the gods in the world before he started the teleport device. After a temporary lightheadedness, Hansen was no longer in the teleport device. What he saw was a huge ice cave. The ice around him was as tough as glass, probably having been frozen for centuries. Ice cones and columns were hanging from the ceiling of the ice cave. There was nothing but coldness, except for the teleport device under Hansen's feet. What is this damn place? Hansen looked around and only saw one hole leading to the outside. He wondered what was outside. It was impossible for a human to build a shelter in such a place. Even if there were humans, it was highly unlikely they would live in this cave. Hansen still had hope and wanted to crawl out of the hole to have a look. Before Hansen acted, he suddenly saw a blur in the teleport device and someone else appeared there. Chapter 425, Second God Sanctuary Hansen looked at the person and became surprised. The gorgeous figure of Zero appeared in the teleport device. No. It is impossible that she's an Evolver. How can she end up here? Even if she was an Evolver, it is highly unlikely for her to end up at the same spot as me. The chance is so slim, and there must be something wrong. Hansen was lost, gazing at Zero. 
Hansen believed there were only two possibilities. One was that Zero was abnormal, the other was that his nine-life cat pendant was problematic. Otherwise, how could Zero end up here? Zero still acted the same way, standing next to Hansen like a shadow, her eyes blinking from time to time. Okay, you win. Hansen said with a wry smile, knowing that his beautiful wish to get rid of Zero was wasted. In fact, Hansen did not really dislike Zero after spending some time with her. She was someone hard to hate. With a sweet face, she rarely spoke or did anything annoying despite being a tag-along. Hansen even felt accustomed to her existence. It was just her weird background that made Hansen feel reluctant to accept her. However, when he thought about it, Zero had never harmed him. In addition, Zero would probably be a huge help to Hans Sr. With her ability, she could probably even fight sacred blood creatures in Second God's Sanctuary. Such a strong and obedient fighter was definitely a great assistance to Hansen who had just entered Second God's Sanctuary. I have a fitness around 60 or 70, so it would be easy for me to break 100 if I gain some Geno points. At that time, I would be able to match Zero's ability, and then it would no longer be an issue for me to keep her around. Hansen thought about it, decided to let it go, and crawled out of the hole. The hole led to a path that was quite twisted. Hansen and Zero walked for a long while before they saw the light. The moment he saw what was outside, Hansen was dazed. All he could see was icebergs and peaks covered in snow. It was also snowing heavily. The world was all white. On the top of the largest mountain, he could see a white fairy tale like castle vaguely through the flying snowflakes. Because the snow was too heavy, he could barely see the details of the architecture. However, he could still feel how dedicated and beautiful it was in the silver storm. Hansen's face suddenly became grim. Although he could not see any details, it was not a building made by man. Otherwise, there would be some modern materials and practical designs, which the castle did not have. Spirit Shelter Hansen suddenly had an idea, which was not good news to him. Since Hansen had not spotted a human building but saw a spirit shelter, it was unlikely for him to meet any fellow man. Judging from the looks of the castle, it was probably owned by advanced spirits. If the spirits were too strong and had a large troop of creatures, Hansen believed he would suffer in his early development. Why are you standing there? A hasty but low voice sounded from Hansen's back. Hansen turned to look and saw a man with his full body covered in arctic suit waving at them from the depths of the hole. Hansen suddenly felt a bit pleased to finally see a human. He took Zero to walk over to the guy. When he was ready to speak, the guy suddenly pulled them inside the ice channel. Before Hansen even said anything, the guy looked them up and down and said, You must be new here. We just teleported over today, Hansen answered and checked the guy out. The guy was over 20 this should be less than 30. He looked quite handsome, but there was a deep exhaustion and helplessness on his face. Then you have terrible luck. It would be very hard for you in the future, the guy smiled wryly and said. Let's go. Let's talk inside so that we don't alarm the ice armored beasts. They have sensitive ears and could hear a voice a thousand feet away in snowstorm. My name is Su Yu, and I came here more than a year ago, so I have more experience than you. Here's a piece of advice. Do not wander around. The guy was quite easygoing, talking to Han Sin and Zero as he walked. Brother, what is this place? Is there a human shelter? Hansen asked. So you curled his lips and said, A human shelter can never be built under such circumstances. Even one could be built, it would be useless because of the spirit shelter in the mountains. It is a shelter of an aristocrat spirit. In addition to aristocrat spirit, there were a dozen mutant creatures and hundreds of primitive ice-armored beasts. Let me put it this way, all the humans here combined would not be an adequate meal for those guys. Is there no evolver with fitness index above 100? Hansen asked. Like creatures, there were four levels of spirits, squire, knight, aristocrats, and royalty, which could be king or queen. The four levels corresponded to ordinary, primitive, mutant, and sacred blood creatures. An aristocrat spirit was about as strong as a mutant creature. However, because spirits had higher intelligence and the ability to control creatures, they were greater than mutant creatures. How could we ever reach 100 in such a shithole? Only 7 or 8 guys would be assigned here randomly all year round. Because we are so close to the spirit shelter, we have to travel far to hunt any creatures so that we don't rattle those guys in the spirit shelter. In addition, the creatures nearby were extremely lacking. 
so we might not even be able to find a creature that falls behind in days. It is difficult to kill even an ordinary creature, so how could we have enough Geno points to strengthen our fitness? See you wind. Apparently, even the strongest evolver among us only had a fitness level of a little more than 60. The good thing is that we stick together. Because we help each other, we are able to hunt some creatures. However, it is not likely that we can make any significant achievements. This damn place is hell. Whoever's in here are just down in luck. Haven't you thought about leaving here? Hansen asked. How do you propose to leave? This place faces the ocean in three directions. Only the direction of the spirit shelter leads to land. Besides, we don't even know where we are. Even if we bypass the spirit shelter, it would be hard for us to locate a human shelter. We would be more than likely to die on the way. So you paused and said, don't get ahead of yourself and don't rush anything. Wait here for a couple of days. When more people arrived, we would be able to go farther to hunt. People here are nice. So as long as you do your part, the meat would be shared to you. So stay and gain some Geno points, know this place better, and then consider hunting on your own. Thank you so much for the instructions, friend. Hansen thanks you for being so straightforward. Call me Su Yu. Su Yu smiled and said. After going back to the ice cave, Hansen chatted some more with Su Yu and got the basic idea about the place. Then he teleported back to the Alliance together with Zero. Hansen decided to get certified as a sacred blood aristocrat. In addition to all the benefits he could get, he would be able to let his sister continue her study at the posh school with confidence.